there. Happy Friday. Welcome to Pop Start Plus. I'm Joe Fryer. Here today, we take Halloween very seriously. In fact, our anchors have been dressing up in costumes since 1994, almost 30 years. In honor of the tradition, all month long, we're going to be looking back at the best of today's Halloween reveals. Plus, we'll show you everything that goes into one of today's biggest days of the year. Let's get started in 2019. The Today anchors went all out as their favorite on-screen dancers, making for quite the reveal. Take a look.
Time we've had two Travoltas. I know. Yeah. Well, we hey. do celebrate. Hey. Talk about Jenna right. for just one yes. hour. Baby, nobody puts her in a corner. No. 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 By the way, I left my baby just to be here with y'all. Oh, because yeah. I love Halloween. We are so thrilled you're here, and I, I knew Peter had moves in wow. the day. That was impressive. Wow. Peter, you showed your A. Yes. I haven't broken out since the bar mitzvah circuit. Bring that to the next White House. This one. Even with the mustache. Yeah. Wow, the anchors really do get into character. That year, they got quite the surprise for all of their hard work. Check it out. Maybe it's the real Sandy. <gasps> Take a look. Oh, wow. No. Hi, Savannah. This is Olivia Newton-John, and I'm standing here with my Sandy 2 outfit from Greece. I heard a rumor that you're going to dress up as me for Halloween. So here's some tips for you. Just act saucy, have a cigarette and hang out your mouth. No, that's not cool now, right? So you can't do that anymore. <laughs> But red high heels, lots of red lipstick, curly hair, and lots of attitude. Have fun. That's amazing. How about that? Thanks for living in Johnson. That's incredible. incredible. We appreciate it. That's a nice you nailed all of those things, which would be very happy. Thank you, Olivia. Who, who could possibly do the Carlton better than Al Roker? Perhaps, perhaps Ooh. Alfonso himself. Oh, wow. Nice. No. Hey, uh, Al, Will. Alfonso here. I think that is the perfect idea for Halloween. You've got to wear some pretty cool costumes. It might as well be Will and I, right? I mean, Will, Al, it just totally makes sense. Have a great Halloween, guys. I got the message to top all messages. Okay. Someone who really brought her rhythm. Oh. She practiced for hours. She no, put her heart no, 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 no. Al Jones, no. this one's yes. for you. Oh. This is amazing. I'm going to cry. Hey, Chanel, thank you so much for thinking of me and Rhythm Nation this year. Man, I cannot believe that it's been 30 years since that album was released, but I'm so glad you're still enjoying it. Oh Happy God. Halloween. Yeah. That is awesome. Those are real tears. That's amazing. You know, you were so good at Janet Jackson. Oh, I used you, to try to be her in my basement. You are her. You are. You are on stage. Oh, my God. Thanks to Janet Jennifer for that message. Jennifer, Jennifer, what did you think of my performance? This is Gina. Touch that again. She can't talk, but she liked it. Yeah. yeah. Performance was a little wooden. You fooled everybody. I, we were all waiting, and then yeah. when you did the man, no. By the we way, didn't want anybody to throw out a bat. You know There's nothing better, by the way, than having Jenna Bush Hager yeah. back with yeah. 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 We're so happy to be here. That was awesome. When we're back, Team Today reflects on their groovy moves. Stay with us.
welcome back. Today's annual Halloween extravaganza is quite the production, and it's always cool to see the anchors reflect on their performances. After the gang transformed into their favorite on-screen dancers, they looked back at how well they did on stage. Young Craig looks. I'm not, he, with the mustache. I with said Craig should show his son that picture and say, this is what you're going to look like in 12 years. Yeah. <laughs> I hope not. Well, we can always <laughs> trot out the picture with the violin. Oh, well. uh, uh, hey, Peter, go. you were fantastic. Talk about Peter. 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 A big, good. a big thanks to my daughters for being my choreographers as we practiced <laughs> this for last week. Wow, let's take a look. I'm going to see. Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, How long did you work on this dance? <laughs> so I practiced it going the wrong direction. This morning, they're like, you're supposed to go right. I'm like, I can I only go right. I can only go one way. <laughs> so good. Anyway, that so was big. so much fun. Yeah, that's that was so terrific. That's a 10. Out. All right. So hey, fun. Then Dylan, <laughs> oh, Dylan our, uh, your inner Elaine I, came I busting out. So much. <laughs> along with something else. <laughs> Well, I didn't have the baby, so that's good. <laughs> but it's funny because this is pretty much how I dance. It's so good. It really wasn't a whole it was lot of. So funny, Dylan. You wasn't a lot that. of practice. That was great. Sweet and, fancy. And ladies. I love our staff behind giving that's you the side eye. Yeah, that was good. Oh, Nobody was dancing with me. I don't know why. You know what's so funny is this morning because everybody was stunned. I saw Breen back there. That's this great. morning when Dylan was practicing, the baby was kicking like crazy. I know. Literally. That episode's called Little Kicks, and I was getting oh, little kicks. Oh, little that's good. Baby likes it. All right, come on, Willie. Oh, I gotta see this. Oh, oh, good. 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 And Gina, the mannequin. Yeah, let's not be proud. This Listen. was the moment. Oh, this is so great. funny. Oh, no. Uh, we should direct this well, too. Oh, that is not done. Right? Not. They did a great and job. And then? Wait for it. <laughs> wow. Yeah, I look, look, look so good right after having a baby. Oh, right? too, gosh. <laughs> Oh my God! Uh oh! Uh oh! So a little bit too much of the man. She forgot it was morning too. Uh, Credit to our director Jimmy Gaines because that's a tough. Yeah, he nailed it. Everything. He nailed it. Right. Well, I think the winner of Halloween is Chanel. Janet Jackson. Were you a dancer? So I used to. There are a lot of girls watching who used to take dance lessons growing up. I was in Kansas. And everybody tried to be Janet Jackson. The key, yeah. earring, the hoop. Oh, good. Everyone all tried, but not everyone can do it. Yeah. You did it. Uh, I mean, you were all in. It was now. so. Did you have to work at that at all, or is it that now? Yeah, so we practiced with the dancers time. one time. What? They, yes. She's That's cool. You only did that one time? So we practiced with the dancers one time, and then but they did it on my phone. backwards. Right, so I got here this morning, and I had it backwards, because oh. I practiced oh. on a phone. Oh, oh just like Peter. Peter. And look at the costume. Like, that costume is spectacular. That is spectacular. So Philip, one of our costume designers, is a huge Janet fan, so he it's went amazing. down it's unreal. to the detail. That's I crazy. mean, you wear that tonight. Keep this on for tonight. Right? Yeah. Keep that on. Yeah. Tonight, yeah. 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 Miss Every Jackson, Halloween. if you know. Philip is wearing a Janet Jackson t-shirt. Oh, he's hardcore. Yeah. 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 He's for real. And then John this one. No one yeah. plays a man like Hoda Kotb. Eddie Munster. <laughs> Take a look. <laughs> Eddie grown up. That, that, you're, you're the dance Eddie Munster. She's just getting a quick Yes, Hoda. But you make it fun. If I can thank all of us. You know I didn't. Is in the pudding right there. <laughs> Those are your moves. Oh, wow. It's just fun. Good. Yes. It was really fun. You guys, there's something about dancing in the rain. I didn't I care. It was yeah. such I know. fun today. Yeah. Yeah. It was. Oh, my so God. Good. And yes. of course, we had a second John Travolta. <laughs> <laughs> uh, a couple of clutches. With Savannah here. and Carson. A little his grease his lightning. His right here. His and his chins. Uh -huh. so Wait, Carson, fun. you got to give my me your voice. Let's see. Bad Sandy and So good. Listen what? to Carson's voice. Go for it, Carson. Sandy. Hey, Sandy. You look so hot. That was fun. We, we actually worked at this, too. We did. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, so fun. Not. Chanel yeah. practiced once for it this incredible for dance. You. We're just stepping, and it took us like five practices to get All I know is that no you one. have the hottest costume. Yeah. I was going to yeah. say, yeah. no, but, yeah. Yeah. no, but Sandy's heels in the yeah. rain. Yeah. Yeah. Are you going to go I'm home with that for Mike? Right. <laughs> no. No. He's, He's not even watching. Um, <laughs> by the way, we thanked, the, we thanked a bunch of folks at the yeah. bottom of the hour. We uh -huh. should also thank our crew in the studio and yeah. outside. Yes. Yes. These guys have been up all night. Yes. They had to keep the stage yes. dry. Yes. It's quite the feat. So big thanks to everybody. Yes. It's quite okay. the production. The yeah. So we wanted to do, since it's Thursday and it's Halloween, we figured we'd do a little Halloween edition of Throwback mm -hmm. Thursday. Mm -hmm. So some of you have seen these pictures, some of you have not. But Mr. Geis, we'll start with you. We'll throw the picture up and you'll tell us what this, this is. This is me at five years old, height oh, of Star oh. Wars. And what's great about that is my mom sewed that costume oh. for me. We bought the mask, but she made the Chewie costume oh. right in the middle of Star Wars mania. So that's Chewie! Sweet. Chewie. That's cool. Yeah.
Uh, I think we got your JBH. Yours is from oh, a couple years a ago with Savannah. Oh, well, yeah, yeah this I is like my this favorite. One. I prefer to dress funny. Yeah. Yeah. And this is um, when Savannah surprised everybody from maternity leave, That's and we were right. mom jeans. I know. That was, I guess, five years ago. Wow. I was wow. just coming back from an August baby, and we did mom jeans. She the called narrative. me and said, hey, do you want to put on mom jeans? And I said, they fit just perfect. <laughs> <laughs> from mom That's jeans to that? Oh. <laughs> JBH, you, you got another one, too. Uh -huh. oh, there we are. Oh, yeah. That's amazing. Oh, I... My mom made me a costume, too, which was this juicy fruit. Um, you can't see the box. It's made out of cardboard box. And my grandpa dressed up as a president. the point? Well, Hoda, oh, which picture well, is this? Well, you know, this one, this one is one of my favorites. It's the hideous, most hideous I've ever been. <laughs> you, know, you only that, had to change one letter. It's really good, though. And by the way, I put lipstick on because I felt so gross. I was like, <laughs> I need something. Oh, yes. That's why you had lipstick yeah. on? How long did that take? It took forever. Those guys, I mean, that was like one of those molds and the whole. Wow. Yeah. That's yeah. impressive. This is, uh, we got one for you from 2008, I believe. Let's see this one. Oh, this is a good one. Let's see. Uh, oh, oh wow. a pity to fool. Oh, uh, yeah, amazing. my favorite. Oh, I, still, okay. I still have the chains. Is that still, that's, that's, that's your favorite that you've done? Oh, one of my years? favorites, yeah, because I love He's Mr. T. Really Mr. T. I love Mr. Yeah. T. This Wait, is that Mohawk is legit. Oh, yeah. yeah. This, yeah. Is, uh, this is mine from last year. You know, every year our, our family oh. goes oh, and pick a family theme. My What's this year? My mother-in-law sews these costumes every year, so last year we were a family of, oh, yeah. Takes her. What are you guys doing this year? Um. I don't think I can tell. Oh, okay. Oh, it's why? Because I think, we'll Cause I think the kids, it's supposed to surprise the kids. Okay. okay. Oh, so they don't need to know what they're no. wearing? No. Wow. That's wow. a cool tradition. Yeah. How about you? Your house? How about you? Well, you so I couldn't find any <laughs> childhood pictures, but I found one from the first time I ever danced in front of people, like, on a show. And it was in Philly. This was about, oh, what? Yeah, so many years oh, ago. I was Beyonce. Oh, wow. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I noticed a theme. Uh, Ringer. Yeah. That was so. I just take people I admire and then just Dance watch them on like YouTube them. Yeah. and try to. Tina yeah. Turner last year. It's like my tribute. It's yeah. true. I, I just noticed this earring. That's amazing. Right. And it's heavy. Oh, that's the tail. <laughs> wow. Cool. God, what about you, D Dry? Um, I had to go through. So growing up in New Jersey, it was always freezing cold mm -hmm. on on Halloween. So my mom just basically layered me up in whatever <laughs> she could. So this costume was just a turtleneck and some pajamas. <laughs> but, but tape a star to a pole, Aww. and I'm a princess. So, so, princess so yeah. Cutie. I like it. it Thank cute. you. How about you? Well, today as you're watching television, everybody does their big Halloween shows, like talk shows. You'll see Ellen, Kelly Clarkson, the big Halloween extravaganza. So back in the day, ten years ago, when I had a talk show. <laughs> I dressed up like some grapes, and um, <laughs> that's, that's one of my favorite American, that's Kevin Smith, one of my yeah. favorite uh, American so filmmakers, cool. and, no um, and yeah, so that's, that's from. Why, why grapes? Is there sp uh, it was just like the bigger the better, just kind of, yeah. you know, More just fun, a little different. Like you know? When you can't dance like Janet Jackson, you do grapes. Yeah. <laughs> I do the grapes. What about you, Pete? So uh, my mom, we, I grew up in Oakland, California. My mom made all of our costumes. She's in town. I'm like, so they want some old childhood pictures of Halloween. She's like, I happen to have 15. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, here's, here's us as a kid. My brother and sister, me, as clowns Aww. and cats. Cute. As kids, Kevin and back on the right and left, and me in the middle. Are you that's in the middle? so classic. Yeah. That, that's me in the middle with a bowl cut. She literally, I mean, it's, it's a real bowl cut. Yeah. Back, just sure. chop it yeah. around. Yeah. 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 That's so not a wig. Costumes, it's really that shaming. Was, that, yeah. 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 My mom would be like, just go in my closet and put on something. It certainly does take a lot of courage. When we're back, a surprise guest joined the third hour crew in studio for Halloween. You will not believe who stopped by 1A. You don't want to miss it.
Welcome back to Pop Start Plus. Here at Today, we love a surprise almost as much as we love Halloween. So how about a Halloween surprise? In 2019, the Third Hour Gang welcomed a mystery trick-or-treater to Studio 1A. Take a look. The J. Peterman catalog. Hey. It's your boy! Hey. Hey. Let me see. Let me see. John O'Hurley. Let That's me see. Awesome. That's it. Remember, you have to kind of torque the body, torque the body, and then the legs have to go off like you're kicking them out of your hips. Sweet. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Wow. Oh, this is so fun. I'm missing a chair? I have going to get a bring, chair. Gonna bring one in. You're going to oh, carry it, sir? Awesome. I don't need a chair. Come on, I'll we just got make one. Yeah, good to see you again. How are you, my oh, friend? Happy good Halloween. Hi. I'm Spe Miss Jackson. Spe <laughs> spectacular. <laughs> just fantastic. Oh, my so God. How are you all? How perfect is this? Isn't this fun? I hear that Intamin's Cake <laughs> episode is, is one of your favorites. <laughs> Yes, I think that was one. Well, it, it contained so many different things. That was the Frogger episode, remember? Where, oh, yes. That where, was a good episode. Where George had the Frogger record on <laughs> his machine, and he turns to Jerry and says, Jerry, I've got to protect that, because he says, <laughs> he says I'm never going to have kids. <laughs> <laughs> you know? I, and I always thought that was kind of the most heart-wrenching moment in, in, the entire, uh, in the entire series. They don't totally play that did. one on repeat enough. No? No. no well, we'll it's, it's the Frogger episode is not one you see that often. I have, uh, I have a lot of control over that. So That's I'm funny. Not sure that okay. Happens. And you told us the last time that you didn't have a traditional audition. Is that right? With the script, you were just handed the J. Peterman catalog? They, well, they hadn't finished the script. They, uh, so they passed me the, the, the catalog, and they said, we just want him to sound the way the catalog was written. Uh -huh. uh, and, and I said, well, it, it kind of reads like a bad 40s radio drama and a bit of a bad <laughs> Charles Kuralt. Could you, could you <laughs> read from the catalog for us? Yeah, we're, we're Go. Do we Jerry, have it? Do you, the catalog? Oh, we have it. Yes. Nice. Okay, I've never seen an actual J. Peterman catalog <laughs> neither. before. Trap. Oh, my gosh. Trap. You're, go. you're going to have me do this without my glasses? There's no oh, they are way really There's no there. way I can read this without <laughs> my glasses. It's small print. Glasses yeah. Around here. Uh, yeah, I got somebody's some. running to get glasses. I, I see think. some reading. Mm, uh, well, uh, uh, wealthy Hold on just a second. Got, everybody's running in this. <laughs> We've got reading glasses. We've got some other options here. You don't have these in a blue, do you? In the wealthy merchant's home in Florence, Italy, circa 1485. <laughs> Lots of rich silk and velvet fabrics, ornate carved furniture, glowing <laughs> silver, all designed to impress. <laughs> but it is this austere and amazingly advanced object that makes a visitor's jaw drop. Oh, <laughs> You, you actually now are a part owner of the J. Peterman Company, right? You know, that's the most bizarre thing. It is, yes. It's like, uh, I like the role so much, I bought the company. <laughs> <laughs> I did, actually, in 2000. So is this a legit actually catalog? It, yeah. it, no, it's a legit catalog with legit products. Oh, J. Peterman. I've actually that's ordered awesome. from this. J. Peterman, is, JPeterman.com. Is that's a Himalayan catalog. walking shoe in there. Well, some things are not. <laughs> but we actually, you know, we did produce the um, uh, Urban Sombrero. You did? We made about 10 of them. Auctioned. The first one I auctioned off for charity went for like $7,500. Wow. wow. Isn't that great? Yeah. This is, there's some good stuff in here, too. There really yeah. is, I'll tell you. We hear Halloween's big in your house. <laughs> well, it's big because of my wife. My wife is the Halloween architect. <laughs> A month before Halloween begins, we start to discuss what oh, Will, wow. our son Will is going to wear. Wow. And then she begins to just get this idea inside of her. And she produces some of the most amazing costumes you've ever seen. But Did they are. Uh, oh, ho, ho. Is everything. This one of them? I'm, the looking at, I'm looking at one that's, of them. Uh, that's Pac Man right there. Oh, my yes. Uh, that's pa Pac Man that's awesome. is. Yeah, isn't that something? Yes. Is that with Papier Mache? That is with uh, Paper Mache, yeah. Papier Mache. Pa papier Mache. Look wow, at how French. Look at these two. The, to the, to the men are born. Uh, and this is uh, Mr. Potato Head. Oh, look, look at that. that. Oh, that's that impressive. These are that's just awesome. extraordinary costumes. Did you get a costume also? Uh, no, you know, I gave up. I gave up because I hit the quint quintessential Halloween costume years ago. I went as the West Side Highway. <laughs> ah, I wore <laughs> spandex. I had cars sewn down all the way this side, all the way down there. Then I sewed cars all the way up the leg. Wow. And none here and none there because the accident was right in the middle. <laughs> oh, okay. John O'Hurley, what a great guy. We'll be right back.
thanks for sticking with us. It has been awesome to look back at today's Halloween reveal from Al as Carlton Banks to Chanel as Janet Jackson. The anchors really knocked it out of the park in 2019. We'll be back next week to look at more great looks. Have a great week. This morning, best-selling cookbook author and chef, our friend Padma Lakshmi. That's right. Her latest cookbook is out right now, and it's called Tomatoes for Neela. And this morning, she's got some great ideas to share for healthy winter dishes. Padma, <clears throat> first of all, it's great to see you. And the ingredient we're starting with that we're focusing on is kale. It's like one of those superfoods. Yes, that's right. It is kale. I love kale. I try to throw it in every dish I have because it's a great hearty but healthy winter uh, green. You know, what I love about kale is that it's great raw, it's great wilted with dressing the next day. It's also wonderful cooked. It has a ton of vitamins, Hoda. It has vitamin A, it has vitamin C, folate, it has vitamin B, vitamin K, it has a ton of antioxidants. It also has omega-3 uh, fatty um, acids, calcium, potassium, you name it. Okay, and wow. so Ways you can use this hearty, hearty winter green. So I have two kinds of kale here. This is curly kale, mm -hmm. which you guys probably are familiar with. There's lots of uh, types of kale. And then I have this, which is called dragon kale. Dragon kale. Kale. Uh, in Italian, it's called lacinato kale. Mm -hmm. And this is the kale that I like the best. You just want to take the center stem and strip that off and then just chop it. What I like to do is buy the kale whole, take, wash it, dry it on kitchen towels, take that center stem off and chop it up and then put it in a bag and leave it in my crisper so it's always ready oh. for me to throw into um, all my soups and salads. You know, sometimes those lettuces are great. Mm -hmm. You don't finish your salad, you have to throw out the salad. Whereas if you have a salad made with kale, mm -hmm. instead of those lettuces, which are mostly water and are still great, but don't have the same nutrients, you can have that salad for two or three days. Hey, Padma, some people, I hear some people massage the kale. Mm -hmm. do you, did you do that? Uh, I don't massage the kale. I just chop it fine. <laughs> you ain't fancy. All right, so, so what, what are we making? What I'm doing, we're going to bounce around with some recipes just because I'm cooking here. So I have sauteed some just plain yellow onion mm -hmm. with a little cumin seeds and some oil and two red chilies. You see that? Uh -huh. Those are are sauteing and to that I'm going to add some minced ginger mm. and some minced garlic and that is going into some lentils also called dal which we'll make in a minute but I just want to get that going um, so it browns and cooks nicely. To that I'm adding a little bit of ground turmeric. You see that? I feel like I'm doing one of those beauty Instagram <laughs> And so I'm going to saute this and let that go. 
And while that's going, I'm going to show you this salad. Look at this beautiful Yum. salad. Ooh. With a mozzarella? Chickpeas. Chickpeas. So uh, for you guys a while back on another holiday season, it's just simple. Pomegranate, pearl mozzarella, mm. the mint, some serrano. Mm. It's dressed so basically with just olive oil, balsamic, and lime juice. I'm going to take that salad and I'm going to add a bunch of chopped kale to it. And this salad then becomes more hearty yeah. and it lasts much longer than any other salad would. And it's filling. Frankly, this would make a great lunch to take to the office or to school the next day. Um, my daughter, Krishna, takes this salad when she's got a field trip and she's the envy of all her mm. teachers. That What's the dressing that. on that? Yeah, and the dressing will wilt the um, kale so that it'll be beautiful the next day. All the juices mm -hmm. from the mozzarella and the pomegranate season that kale with the dressing. And look how beautiful that is. Mm -hmm. it's don't, you also love, don't you love the kale? Because it, it even wilted or even chopped up like that, it holds up against yeah. the dressings and sauces. It, it stays robust and doesn't wilt away. Exactly. Now you can see how these onions and ginger and garlic are frying and breaking down. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we got about 10 or 15 seconds. I would add pancetta to that, yeah. but that's me. Yeah. So I'm just going to add some tomato to that. Uh -huh. And here I have some yellow lentils. Oh, that yeah. I love love that. Salt. I'm adding kale to that. Uh -huh. hey, like, I want that. this. I want this for me breakfast. Too. A stew, which is Yum. basic. But you could do chicken or beef, and I'm adding kale to that. Love it. There you go. Thank you, Padma. Padma, Padma we got to run. Yummy. We got to run. But all of these dishes are going to be on our website. Looks real good. Today.com slash food. And we're back with Today Food and Season Chef Alfred Portale. His illustrious career includes 35 years as the executive chef at New York's iconic Gotham Bar and Grill, where he earned a Michelin star and among other great accolades there. Now Chef Portale is at the helm of his own restaurant in Chelsea, Portale, an upscale, casual Italian restaurant. Chef, it's great to have you here. Nice to, nice how's, how's this chapter of your, this new chapter in your culinary career? Uh, the restaurant is fantastic. You know, people go there, it's got great food, great wine list. It's, I feel like I'm hosting a, a dinner party every night. Where made you want to leave Gotham after so, such a long reign? You know, I, I, I always wanted to do Italian and uh, here we are. So um, I have had a great time. I read your mom and your grandmother, you're from Buffalo, would cook Italian food for you growing up. That's right, that's but right. But how, how was it different? They used American ingredients? Um, well, to, to some extent, to yeah. some extent. In fact, this recipe uh, that we're making today is something my mom used to make on Fridays. Because oh, cool. growing up, we couldn't eat meat on Fridays. Right, so. right, Lent. All right, so what are we making? Wow. Um, we're making a pesto, uh, an arugula pesto, so a little different. Okay. It starts with blanching. We blanch the herbs first. And now what that does is it, uh, it sets the color. So you get a nice, really bright, bright, looking pesto and smooth. So we let these blanch. So it's not even really about cooking things off and stopping the cooking, it's just about preserving the color? And... Yeah, we're setting the color exactly. Wow. And it'll give us a, a beautiful, beautifully colored pesto. And if you don't have arugula, can you substitute that? Absolutely. Uh, increase the other herbs or um, I would use spinach, spinach something yeah. else. All right. Okay, so next, the ingredients. Uh, could, could get yep. some. You, you can be little, in charge little, of little this. zesting? Yeah, in the blender I have some capers. So we'd put that we'd put the green in here though, right? Yeah, I've got them right here. So okay, we're gonna, perfect. we're gonna add that. Just a little bit. That's good. That's got good. it. We add the blanched herbs. A touch of that. And I have uh, anchovy, garlic. We have our eating table over there. No, quiet, normally. and that's a good sign. That means they're already eating this delicious okay, meal. Okay, so normally we would put the top on. I've got some extra virgin olive oil, and, okay. and you want to add this in a steady stream to emulsify. Wow, it's going to be, okay. To save some time, we're going to yep, skip that enough. step. Yep. And here's our pasta. Um, what pasta? Just you want spaghetti? We're using spaghetti today. Bucatini, angel hair, it's great. Bucatini. So we, I'm not draining the pasta because I want some of this pasta water. Wow, oh, look at that, guys. That's okay. how you do it. That's the pro move go. right there. And why do we like the pasta water, chef? Why do we? Okay, add a little more pasta water. Remind everybody the importance of the pasta water, adding it. You like it spicy? Yeah. Some Calabrian chili. <laughs> yep. <laughs> and here's our pesto. This makes it creamy, I think. The yeah, pasta that water it just kind of keeps the... It helps emulsify the sauce. Uh-huh. Add some cheese. And it's that simple. Oh, a little bit of arugula. And we'll wilt that in. Yeah. Wow. You typically, chef, add pasta to the sauce or sauce to the pasta, just in general. 
<laughs> like do, do people, yeah, I mean, I see people just do what you do, where you put the pasta in here and then you just add the sauce into it. Yeah, yeah. Well, you always wanted to cook a little bit, in, to cook the, the pasta. Cook it in, in the, the sauce, sauce a little bit. We keep bit. the okay. pasta al dente. Yeah. And then we finish okay. it in the pan. So we that is a beautiful, light, summery. Let me take a bite of this, guys. How is it? Big in there? Those tomatoes. Dilly. They're just like popping. Yeah. Oh, the tomatoes. You know, we kind of, the tomatoes are simply roasted in the oven. Oh. How long? About 20 minutes, 30 oh, minutes. Delicious. What happens so is it, it concentrates the flavor. It's yeah. delicious. That's all you did to it. What do you think, Oda? It's you know, so yummy. Uh, it's I mean, great. Craig play. made this point. It's not too pesto-y, right. which is really good. And, right. Chef, I don't know how you did that. I don't, I don't know what part in the process, but you can taste the lemon. You can taste the anchovy. Yeah. There's nothing overwhelming. It's great. Yeah. Thank you. Thank yummy. you. And uh, we're going to add a little olive. If you don't olives. like olives. Mm. Nice. Put less in, but Pop here we go. Flavor. And then we, we're going to finish with a little bit more cheese. This is how you do it. This is right. you want this experience. You find yourself in the Chelsea neighborhood of New York. Okay. Go to Portale and see our friend chef here. He's going to make you. you a meal Thank just you. like this. Yummy. It is delicious. All right. So do that. And if you can want to make this recipe, if you're at home, you go to today.com/food. I have a feeling a lot of people are going to be making this one tonight. Yeah. Chef, thank you so much. This morning on Today Food, two amazing Italian meals you can make this week, you can make them tonight. Here with us today is Laura Vitale, cookbook author and host of Laura in the Kitchen. Laura, good morning. Good morning. Sometimes, you know, a nice big Italian meal feels like something you save for Sundays, but yeah. this is like a really quick, easy meal. It's so quick, it's so easy. It's actually two things that I can get my very picky daughter to eat. Oh. So I feel like it would be super family friendly. No, I'm all ears. Um, and Hidden spinach really always easy. goes a long way. Yeah, too. we're oh. gonna start off with some chicken meatballs. Okay. And I make them really easy, but I have to make them flavorful because I think ground chicken can be so dry. Yes. So in a bowl, if you would, yes, add a little bit of garlic. A little garlic, okay. Yes, and a little garlic. A pinch of Italian seasoning. Oh, just a pinch. Just right. a pinch. I like to add some frozen chopped spinach. Make sure you thaw and like squeeze out really all that liquid. It, okay. it adds not only moisture, but it also adds extra vitamins that I know my kid will eat. Exactly. Because once it's covered in a, in a yummy Parmesan sauce, yeah. she won't know that it's right. in there. It's just delicious. Egg, Parmesan cheese, breadcrumbs, a little salt and pepper, and you're okay. gonna mix it all together. Mm -hmm. Um, can you overmix kind of chicken like you can with beef? Does it make it tough? Not really. Okay. Not really. I've never found that to be an issue whatsoever. Great. You mix it together, and then at this point, if you want to, you can form your meatballs, which I like to use. A scooper? A scooper. To make sure they're all the same size. Yeah, make sure that they're all the same size. I also don't like to get my hands dirty. Um, <laughs> and this is a great, actually, it's a great thing. You roll them up, and then you can actually freeze them like this. Oh. So that you have they're them good ready. To go whenever you need them. If you do a double batch, so that when you have another late night dinner to put Ooh. together, you can Perfect. thaw them out. So when it comes time. time to cook them, do you? So then I I put them in the oven. I just okay. throw them in a hot oven 420 minutes and they're perfect. And okay. then you make the sauce by sweating out some shallots and garlic. Mm -hmm. Make those then, shallots sweat. Yes. Then you <laughs> add some tomatoes. Okay. Ooh, that is yummy. And then you'll do a little bit of wine, chicken stock, a little bit of cream. All of this? Or? Yes, all of okay. it. And then let that reduce until it's really nice and thick. And then when the sauce is ready, you add your meatballs back in until they are sort of warm through. Ooh, and then clean that too. is like it. it. Doesn't taste Heavy. No, it's super, they're super light, and I attribute that to the spinach. Oh, wow. yeah. I attribute that to the spinach. And yeah, they're not mm. dense. They're right. really no, good. Not at all. I need to get into the meatball. How about I this can't pasta? Wait. This pasta is oh, let's, right let's get, let's The pasta is next level, and so it's good. actually one of those recipes that I 
pulled oh, together wow, out delicious. of leftover things that I had in my fridge. Really? And all I, yeah, I had some open sun-dried tomatoes, which I don't know what to do with them a whole lot because they're mm -hmm. not my favorite thing to eat as is. So I added them to some sweating shallots and garlic. Or sweating shallots. Why do you sweating like shallots? I need to learn how to sweat shallots. shallots. They're, yeah. they're a bit more mild and tender, and the pack usually has seven or eight, so I like to use them all oh, up. That's true. Could it you use onions or scallions? You can use onions, you can use shallots, and you can use green onions, any alien, really. Okay. Add your sun-dried tomatoes mm -hmm. along with a little bit of tomato sauce. That's why it has that taste. Yes, and then you do a little oregano, a little hot pepper oh, wow. flake, and then That's you'll so add, easy. then you'll add a little bit of the pasta oh, the water, water oh. and your rigatoni, mm. and then that pasta water you want it to get in there. Right. I'm gonna try this. And then that so rigatoni is just rich and delicious. And then the best way to serve it, yeah, I saw is you do something really cool with a burrata. Oh, that is yummy. Mm -hmm. And then yeah. as you eat it, you would obviously yeah. add this to an entire giant serving, not just right. one. Right. <laughs> Although I'm not judging. No. That is fine. A oh big my gosh. sprinkle of parm, a little additional hot pepper flakes for heat because I like things hot. And the burrata adds such and a creaminess so to it. Good. Look, so we good. almost finished it. And it's <laughs> easy. And it's easy. Oh, wow. And if you don't have sun dried tomatoes, skip them. And you could use any pasta if you any want. Any pasta, long, short, whatever kind of pasta. Yeah, good. Very oh, wow. forgiving. So good. I've never thought of just the fresh burrata as a yeah. sauce yeah. almost. It's it makes so its own good. sauce. It mm. makes it creamy. Mm -hmm. Thank and you. That is delicious. The secret of sweating those shallots. Oh, yeah. That's a secret. Oh, uh, oh, wow. For Thank these you. recipes, it's today.com <laughs> slash food. We are back with a special Today Food for our Discover Black Heritage series. We are joined by one of our dear friends, the one, the only, Mr. Marcus Samuelson. He is the chef and owner behind several of New York's hottest restaurants, including a new one, Hav and Mar. It's a communal style spot that celebrates African roots in modern black cuisine. This morning, Chef Marcus is wrap, uh, wh whipping up one of his favorite dishes, yeah. lettuce wraps with mm. tamarind ginger roasted oh, pork yeah. and coconut spiced rice. Can I just tell you how I'm excited I am to cook with you? Mm. Black History Month, <laughs> but also cooking with you, Al. I'm just so excited that we're cooking together. It's been yeah. a while. We, you know, my yes. friend, we first met when you were at Aquavit in 1990. What's that? Child labor back then? <laughs> what, 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 Al? I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> you're dating yourself. I don't know what you're talking about. Like, I'm with hipsters. I'm with Chanel. Yeah, 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 exactly. you know, I'm with the hipsters. I'm with the kids. Not with the seniors here. Do you know that I play soccer with her husband? Oh, yeah. Really? Uche. Yeah, 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 no. He was, he, was he wearing his, oh, no. his oh, Wakanda unitone? Yeah, the oh, Wakanda. Oh, yeah. Anyway, so Hav and Mar. Yes. Tell me about this restaurant. What Hav great and Mar. Concept. Hav is the Swedish word and it means ocean. Mm -hmm. And Mar is Ethiopian word and it means honey. So sweet water, a mm. lot of focus on mm. seafood, delicious food. But today, I was thinking about going back to your Bahamian roots. Well, thank you. This oh. is a dish that really has Caribbean influences. So we're okay. going to do slow roasted pork. Okay. Right? In the oven. In the oven okay. with tamarind glaze. Oh. Right? Now, what's tamarind? Oh, tamarind is this super, super sort of, uh, it has these sour notes, a right? Little umami? Like, yes. Yeah, so you find all over the Caribbean. Uh -huh. So we're going to put tamarind here, mm. in here. Okay. Right? And then ginger. Right. Mm. And a little bit of garlic. A little bit of shallots. We're just mm -hmm. gonna let that simmer. And here comes the, the kicker: shrimp powder. Shrimp, shrimp powder. powder. I know. I've never heard of Super it. Super. That's um, that's where the umami comes from. Mm -hmm. Some honey and habanero. Do not touch it. This is spicy. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now you get that. You simmer that. that. We blend. Okay. And then we're gonna rub all of that on top of the pork. Mm -hmm. Boom. We're just gonna pour pour, it pour it on. all on top of the pork. It'll be on the pork. Yes. Mm. And, and we're slow. Put that in the oven. Yep. How put long? in the oven. Long. It takes all day. Okay. But the slow and lower heat, eight hours. The lower you cook it, the better it's going to take. Eight hours. Okay. Yes. So now we're going to make the coconut rice. Coconut rice. Again, mm. Caribbean notes. Right? Yes. And that's the beauty of Black History Month. Right? You can be inspired by things from Africa. You can be inspired by things from the Caribbean. Coconut milk? Coconut milk. Of course. Yeah. Of course. <laughs> mm. Little turmeric. Mm -hmm. You know that Savannah and I used to cook together too, but she ditched me right now. I don't know what happened. I don't know what happened. I don't know what happened. You know what like, they, we I, cooked together, we had a good thing going, and then. We had a great thing and going. And yeah. in the middle of when we were cooking, she said, I also cook with Bobby Flay. I was like, what? No, no, I, 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 I was like, never with Bobby Flay. Savannah will do the like that. <laughs> yeah. Huh? Oh, okay, no. So, so no, you get, no, no, no. Get... Marcus, they canceled my show. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. They got sick of me burning myself all the time. So you got the fork out. Yes. Yes. Now it's slow roasted. It's uh, delicious. Look at look this. At oh my God. And you can slice it, of mm. course. You can just rip it with a fork, right? Just like this. Look at that. Or look at that. Look how moist it oh, is, right? Wow. Oh. I got a little. So you're going to shred some of that. Shred it mm. right here. 
Look at that. Oh, oh man. Some oh, of that wait, cinnamon I'll wait sauce. Wait yeah. Try this. You're so okay. Chanel and I had this plan, right. which was supposed to be a surprise, but we have a table for you and uh -huh. your wife mm -hmm. at Havmar, and we're gonna celebrate you out because wait. you know you deserve to be celebrated. That's right. Amen. I was very emotional today, cooking, knowing uh -huh. I cook with you. Uh -huh. And you know, we just we just Worth excited. It. So you'll you know? take the rice? Yes, the coconut rice. It's such a lovely man. Layers yeah. of flavor. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, it really is. Yeah. So Listen, good. when your daughter comes back from Paris, mm -hmm. your dad <laughs> can have a new recipe oh, yeah. and show up. Look what I'm making. Exactly. Just a little, just a little pork with tamarind. This go. is what I've been up to. And you like to garnish it with a little yeah, parsley? Because we're fancy, you know, a little bit, a little bit of shallot, a mm. little bit of so that. Guys, what do you think? It I want more. I don't have any left. Wow. You know what I think? Listen. I think Marcus Samuelson is the most lovely, oh. talented, oh. and oh. charming person. You get a table, and you get a table, and you get a table, and you get a table. Oh. All That's is it. forgiven, Savannah. Yes, <laughs> all is forgiven. Just Marcus, it is truth. so good to see you. It's always good to see you. Thank you love so you. much. All right. So good. Hey, Thank check you. out so this good. recipe at today.com slash food. This morning, we are joined by two young women whose hearts are even bigger and warmer than the recipes they're cooking for us today. Moon Lin Tsai and Yin Chang are the founders of Heart of Dinner, a New York City nonprofit delivering warm meals to members of the Asian community who are isolated or elderly. You're, you're really going to get into the, the tradition of fish in mm. Chinese culture. Yes. I mean, even the word for fish is yes. something special, right? Yes. Uh, yu is phonetically similar to a word that represents uh, prosperity Ooh. and abundance. So. That's great. Everything has meaning and everything has so much thought behind it. It can also be intimidating, though. I've never actually cooked with a whole fish before. <laughs> well, don't worry. Very... She's here, so I'm a little intimidated <laughs> as well. So thank goodness. So it's very simple. You'll start off with the whole fish. You don't want to fillet. You want to keep it full for abundance. And then what you're going to do is just pat it dry first. Mm -hmm. And this will work with any whole white flesh fish. Mm -hmm. and, and it's got to get scaled, right? Got to get scaled and uh -huh. clean. Yeah, okay. patting it dry is really important so that oil doesn't fly all over the place. Oh. Okay. And right now I am julienning the ginger, and this is so delicious to add depth and flavor and complexity. Um, so then right now after we're done and you're gonna cut it into little matchstick size pieces, mm -hmm. we're gonna bring the fish over to the steamer here okay. as well. And a lot of times your fishmonger will clean it and gut it. Yes, really absolutely. Well, so. If you can ask them even to remove the center bone, that's uh -huh. great too. Yes. Okay. All righty. And then we're going to So that's just here. water in there. And yep. that's just steamed water. Mm -hmm. Yep. And then there it Now, goes. do you put, uh, what goes in next? 
And then we're gonna put a little bit of rice wine to cut the fish. Mm. Do you need the steamer to be able to really do this effectively? You do. You do. Yeah. You do. Well, there's a trick. Fish. Well, I, I, you know, a lot of people don't have steamers like this out. <laughs> a quick trick that my mom used to do is to put it in the microwave for three minutes. Uh -huh. Really? Yeah. See, it works trick. Great. Not everybody has the fancy, you know. Wow. Situation. Okay, so that's the ginger. So it doesn't Stallion. take much. Yeah. And a little bit of soy sauce just to steam with a little bit of flavor. Mm. And then off we're done. And how long does that take? It's about seven to 10 minutes, depending okay. on the size of your fish. Okay. okay. You know, let's talk about so the next part here. And you always say, even bok choy, like there's so many things that have meaning, but let's try this really quickly. All right, Dylan, you want yours? <laughs> yes, oh, absolutely. Yes. Mm. Enjoy. It's funny, you girls were asking how how we like eating fish at you know, like, nine o'clock in the morning. <laughs> I love it. This is this love. is no problem for me. Us too. Oh we do God, love so a good. simple breakfast. We usually also at home will sometimes good? have mackerel over oh. rice and it's so delicious. Yeah. Oh, oh wow. Fantastic. Fantastic. In the morning. Yeah. Yeah. All right, All right so let's talk bok about bok choy. I don't oh, bok, so bok choy. So that's one of our favorites. Mm. Okay. So we want to start off with aromatics like ginger, some garlic, and completely optional if you want some fried shallots that we have over Ooh. here. Okay. And it adds a lot of aroma. It's so Oh, it smells good. Oh, tell me about it. Your oh, home is going to be filled up with mm. delicious smells. You want to saute that a little bit. Okay. And you just want to make sure that garlic does not burn. Right. And so you want to do it for about 30 seconds. We do that at home. And what we're going to do is we're going to grab some whole bok choy. It's this so is, good for you, too. Oh, it's so healthy. Yeah. Talk about nutrition and all the good luck. So we grew up having this for Lunar New Year especially because what it represents is wishing your family long life, oh. longevity. And that's really important because it's filial piety here where we respect our elderly very deeply. Oh, I love that. Yes, and that's an abundance. And, and what's the significance of the fruit flavor? Oh, gosh. Yeah. So that's her actual favorite. She I loves her fruit. Love <laughs> fruit flavor. So mm. and I'm so happy that the oranges, they look like little nuggets of gold. Uh -huh. So it symbolizes wealth. The dragon fruit, dragon being oh, strength and power. Mm. Okay. And then you also have the papaya that's also abundant and wealth. Mm. And then the pomelo to symbolize unity and wholeness as a family. Wow. Abundance, well, wealth, prosperity. You. I love yes. it. Happy New Year. Happy, oh, happy New, New, Year. New Year. Yes. And so thank good. you so much oh, for these recipes, you. which you need to try. Head to yeah. create.com slash food. Our guide this morning, the one and only Padma Lakshmi. We are making the healthiest dish possible. So I'm going to make a sauce, and it's a Balinese baked fish. I first had this dish when I was in Bali okay. over 20 years ago, and it's so simple. And the reason I like it is because it's very low effort. Okay. You'll see. We love that. It's very healthy. It's very high protein, and it's easy to make. Okay. You know, people always ask me how I stay lean. Yes. As, you know, when I do all this eating on Top Chef, it's not easy. But it's eating like this okay. that helps after I finish. So we're going to start with onions in the blender. And to the onions, we're going to add garlic, ginger, okay. a little bit of tamarind paste. Now, tamarind, tamarind paste. paste 
is wonderful. You can get it at any good supermarket. It'll last in your pantry. It's going to add like a, a, ta a tart and sweet tang to it. Okay. Also, I'm adding toasted sesame oil All right. and cumin powder. Cumin powder. And a little salt to taste. That is really it. Okay. And about a, two or three tablespoons of water. Okay. Go ahead. We'll mix that up. You're going to mix that up. I'm not going to do it because of sure. the noise. But this is but this what, what it, it looks, looks like. like. And what kind of fish are we using here? We're using red snapper, but honestly, you could use cod, you could use flounder. Any white fish. Any white fish. This is so easy. And, and they're already digging in over there. What's what's the verdict? How is yummy. it? It's yummy. Got a lot of umami to it. Oh, it's you love the umami. And love then the umami. I'm, all I'm doing is pouring this. That's and it. this is going to go into an oven at 350 degrees for 20 or 25 minutes. And that's all. Foil? And then we'll, no foil. Foil. Okay. Foil. So you cook it covered. Cook it covered. Right. And then when it's done, I know it doesn't look very appetizing, but it's so delicious. All you're going to do is take fresh mint, uh -huh. oh, mint. And, and garnish, garnish. Okay. and a little bit of lemon juice. And, and this has literally like less than 250 calories a wow. serving. Wow. Yeah, and you're going to pair it with protein. bok choy? I am. I so. find cooking bok choy intimidating. Why? I, I don't know. It's probably because <laughs> I'm not a very good and cook. so good. So you want to get bok choy and you just want to quarter it like this. Depending on the size, you can cut it smaller. Okay. And all we're going to do is dump this bok choy and That's blanch it, it literally bok for 90 seconds. And okay? why do you blanch it? So that it cooks evenly and you don't get weird spots when you're sauteing it. Okay. But you don't want to cook it for that long. Like this is going to cook for literally 90 seconds, two minutes. And then you take it out and you immerse it in the cold. You don't even have to. Oh. I mean, look, if it's a weeknight and the kids are hungry and you okay. got to go, don't worry about immersing it's so it. You're good. not in a restaurant. It's, it's got fine. a little kick. So Yummy. this is what it looks like when it's blanched about 90 seconds. I have butter melting here. This is so easy as well. And again, all I'm doing is adding some Asian ingredients to it, which is the toasted sesame oil. What? See a theme emerging. Soy sauce. Well, it's going to go with that fish, right? Onions. Garlic. No onions. Sorry, that was garlic. Garlic. That was ginger and a little bit of red chili. There's your bite. It's There's really your bite. Good. Uh, yeah. Yummy. yeah, and then you just saute this up. And I mean, I literally made it in real time. I made this whole meal yeah. in real time, except for the 20 minutes that the fish took. Right. That's yeah. how easy it is. Padma Lakshmi, thank you so much as always. Thank Congratulations. You. Hello and welcome to The Boost. As adults, we always like to try out something new. And today, that's what our friends on the third hour of today are doing. Al, Craig, Chanel, and Dylan go on the job, checking out unique careers they've always been interested in. First at bat, Dylan taking us behind the scenes at iconic Fenway Park, where she suited up and took a crack at snagging foul balls. This is truly a pinch me moment. I get to be on the job, on the field, right here at Fenway Park. I'm stepping up to the plate as I learn how to be a ball attendant and work the scoreboard at a real major league baseball game. Casey Ricard is one of the lucky few that fields foul balls for the Red Sox. Do you get nervous before a game? What's the experience like? Oh, definitely. I get the nerves before every game. I wonder if the ball's going to get hit super hard to me today or not. I'll try and make the play, but if not, I just got to get the ball wherever it lands and give it to a fan. So when you give the foul ball to a fan, are you always looking for a kid, or how do you choose just who to toss it to? Every single game I get asked, probably by hundreds of kids, they'll come down like in between innings for a ball. Once a kid gets it and their face lights up, it's like the best feeling in the world. To make sure I'm not out of my league when it comes to this job, Casey practices with me on the field. And you get it? Yeah. And then you toss it? Yep, exactly. Okay. <laughs> After warming up, a surprise meeting. Do you sign a ball for my wife? Would I sign a ball for your wife? Yeah. Jason Veritek, a former Red Sox player who was part of two World Series championship teams and now current coach, stops by. Wait, 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 why am I signing the ball? Because. You have to sign one for Calvin then. This just feels backwards. You'll make my wife's day. <laughs> Do you have any tips for the, the ball attendant? No, looks like she had you locked in. Good, Good luck fans. Today. I'm Thank a big you. Fan too. Good, Good luck, luck out there with that. As everyone gets ready for the game, so do I, changing into my uniform. Here we go. I officially take on my duties, which also includes lending a hand with pregame ceremonies. Tonight, we help lead a special group onto the field for childhood cancer awareness. With that, 
I'm ready for a whole new ball game, literally, as I get into position for the first inning. All right. I'm going to sit right here. I'm going to sit right here. By my side, Camille DeRocher, who's in her third season as a ball attendant. We got a strike. Yeah. All right, that's one pitch down. After waiting, it's all you. All you. a it's foul all you. ball okay. finally comes my way. You did great, that was perfect. I wrap up on the field and go to my next job heading inside the iconic Green Monster, Fenway Park's left field wall, to learn how to operate the manual scoreboard, only one of two left in Major League Baseball. Sarah O'Connor is one of the operators. How are you even listening to the game? We're just watching the like game. Like, you're literally just watching the you game. You can watch from these here. holes, or like, yeah, you can just watch through that window. OK, so the inning is over, and okay. they didn't score, so we're going to stick this all the way up in here. And then it's my turn. OK, this one's easy. You're just going to climb up here, pull oh, that yeah. one down, and then flip it around, because the Red Sox got a hit. OK, this one? Yeah. OK. There's not a lot of rooms for fingers here. You can't drop it, right? Like out the window? Yay! Oh my gosh. After scoring some more, I leave my mark. Tell me about all the signatures. How many people have been back here to sign it? It's a lot of signatures. Players come in, people come in on tours and stuff. Jeremy Pena signed last season before he was the World Series MVP. Well, I have a marker. Now the hard part is deciding where to sign. Let's squeeze it in right here. There we go. It's there for all eternity. For the next 110 years. Yes. After that, I was ready to call it a day, but not before enjoying America's pastime for myself. I think it's time we just enjoy the game, right? We've got our hot dogs, Tessie, Wally, cheers. So much fun. OK, so Al decided to take on a slightly larger park, one of the most beautiful places in the country where he went on the job as a national park ranger. Standing along the Blue Ridge Mountains of Virginia, just 75 miles outside of Washington, D.C. Good, Carl. Nice to meet you. Great to meet you, too. Great to have you in the park. I am so excited. My guide slash instructor for the day, Ranger Carl Rand, to show me what it takes to protect this land. I understand, Carl, that you were once a junior ranger. I was. I grew up visiting national parks. That's kind of what sparked my passion for the outdoors. And essentially, that's what put me in the big hat here today. Ranger Rand growing up, taking family vacations to national parks, later becoming a park ranger at Yellowstone, Olympic, and now Shenandoah National Park. First order of business, getting officially sworn in as a junior ranger. I will teach all of my friends. I will teach all of my friends. How to protect. How to protect. The natural world. The natural world. All right, thank you very much, Junior Ranger, for all of your hard work. Oh. And welcome to Shenandoah Rangers. I've got a badge, and I've got power, and I'm going to use it. My first task as a Junior Ranger, raising the flag to open the park, a tradition started by the Civilian Conservation Corps. We'll raise it swift. Next, we packed up to go on what the rangers call a rove. What that means is we're hiking, talking to visitors, making sure people are being safe, they know where they're going. Our checklist was? First and foremost, being water. water. Yes. Navigation, bug spray, first aid kit, fluorescent safety vest, flashlight, sunglasses. Mm -hmm. A little snack. All right, let's rove. And now we're on this, this iconic road, uh, Skyline Drive. Yeah. How long is this thing? Skyline Drive is 105 miles. So there's about 75 different overlooks overlooking the iconic Shenandoah Valley. Our road began at mile 917 of the famous Appalachian Trail. There's something here, what, this scat. What, what kind of... It, <laughs> well, I'm glad you asked because that's going to be a domestic dog. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so it's not any wildlife. It's just... Well, no. Besides the wildlife, there's the, all this plant life as yeah. well. Over 2,000 different species of flora here in the parks. Why are the park rangers such an integral part, so important to the National Park Service? One thing that people expect when they come to a National Park Service site mm -hmm. is a ranger. Right. Mm -hmm. They are protecting the visitors. They are protecting the resource. This is your office. Not a bad office, if I do say so myself. In fact, hold on just a sec, just... I mean, <laughs> this is crazy. This is complete silence. Yep. 
finally running into some visitors. Do you have bug spray? Nope. <laughs> Hold on, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Okay, I, I got one for you on your right. There you go, right here. <laughs> actually really need this. Yeah. <laughs> Have a great time. Enjoy the park. Thank you. Alrighty. <laughs> so exciting. My first park goers. <laughs> we continued the road at the Dark Hollow Falls Trail. You've got water to go in and everything yeah. like that. Yep, we're prepared. Have a wonderful trip. Thank, Thank you, guys. You. And by trip, we don't mean falling. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and my final duty as a junior ranger. Who's ready to become a junior ranger? Mm-hmm. Let's see your hands. Swearing in the next cohort. So I'm going to have all of you stand up straight and tall for me. Raise your favorite hand and repeat after me. As junior rangers, as junior rangers, we promise, we promise to do everything we can to help preserve and protect Shenandoah National Park. Thank you very much, junior rangers, for all of your hard work. Let's give the junior ranger salute. 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 After the break, watch out, Shakespeare. Chanel Jones tries out a new career as a poet. Stay with us. Back to the booth. Today, our third hour gang is getting out of the studio to try their hands at some new careers. Chanel recently put her skills to work, joining poets on the job using a typewriter to brighten people's day. I don't know how to do a poem that doesn't rhyme. Like, what else is there? Over the years, I've been known to share a rhyme or two. It's heartwarming to see. If there was a Dad of the Year award, they would tie, at least according to me. I still don't like beer. Oh, no, no, my dear. That's the only thing I could think of to rhyme. But I thought I'd take my poetry to the public and headed to nearby Little Island to go on the job with poets Zoe Branch and Jay Sean Lee from creative agency Ars Poetica. Would you like a poem? The two are typewriter poets creating custom poems for strangers in minutes. What kind of poems do they ask for? Can you write me a love poem? My grandfather who passed a few years ago. Can you write a poem about that? You really want to hold a person's story and make sure they feel heard. So can you do a poem for me? One, because I selfishly want one, and two, because I want to learn. Yes, absolutely. So let me know what you could use a poem about today. How about juggling? Juggling career, trying to run a marathon, and three kids, but also embracing it and realizing that these are all things that I'm lucky to have. Okay, give me a moment. In just a few minutes, are you kidding me? Oh, that's so sweet. I'm gonna cry. <laughs> oh, hands, may you hold all this heavy, wide truths, these gifts that are round, that are flying through the air. Now they go, all these precious things, with my feet planted firm on this earth. <laughs> Girl, it sounds like scripture. <laughs> it seems like you're a therapist for some people yeah, at times. There just aren't that many platforms for random strangers to connect with each other vulnerably. It was time to get my creative juices flowing. I'm gonna write a poem about you. Maybe a poem that just talks about all the great people in our lives that just pop up randomly. Okay. <laughs> Oops. 
the typewriter took a little getting used to. Oh, shoot. Sorry. Whatever. Oh, shoot. Finally. There are a lot of typos. It looks like a three-year-old like wrote you a love letter. Noise. Beautiful noise. I learned it's not noise, it's music. Sweet music. Now I bring music to the people I meet in the park, a wedding, or with friends. Cheers to loving, living my purpose, making beautiful music. Love Chanel. Thank you so much. Do you like her? I love it. You know what? If this TV thing doesn't work out for me, can I just... <laughs> <laughs> They're going to stick me in the middle of a park in New York City. Shall we do it? I love this job. Like, whoops. I feel a lot of pressure. Hi. Hello. What's your name? Lucy. OK, so tell me, like, why you're here in New York. We're just here on a family holiday. <laughs> OK, Lucy. I'm ready. Hold on. <laughs> Where's the dash? Ooh. Pardon my horrible typing. Almost done. Okay. Woo, are you ready for your phone? <laughs> I just have to fix one thing. From North England at NYC, a trip I will forever cherish. Hello, world. Here we come. <laughs> Welcome to New York. <laughs> Talk to more tourists. Hmm, how do I want to start? We return to Germany with memories we will forever cherish. Oh, I, I like it. What would you like me to write a poem about? I was starting to get the hang of it, I think. I've been here in New York and wandering and just kind of feeling like an open vessel for, for inspiration. No, you can't pee. <laughs> wandering but never lost. Let her be inspired by the sights and sounds. She wanders, but she's never lost. Love Chanel. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. I love it. Oh, yeah. That morning, I typed up a poem to mark the end of our time. And no, this one did not rhyme. Every day is a new adventure, new ways to connect with each other and reconnect with nature. When we are open, the universe reveals new gifts. At the heart of it all is love. The end. Now it's Craig's turn to learn a centuries-old craft, woodworking. Let's see if he's able to nail it. In my line of work, it's easy to get caught up in the news cycle. Hurricane disaster zone in Florida yesterday. You've got to stay plugged in to keep up to date on ever-changing events. Making time for myself can be a bit of a challenge. I do not have a lot of time uh, because of the job. I have two small children. I'd like to think I am committed to growth. I need to acquire new skills. So I decided to try woodworking. Anytime I see like something that's, that's well made out of wood, I always think, wow, it'd be cool to try to make something like that. But I needed some help. Meet Keenan Spiegel, the son of a carpenter. He grew up with hands-on knowledge on how to use tools. I spent most of my childhood around job sites, helping frame houses. Um, taking home the scraps and kind of building stuff. He's got a job in finance, but his passion project is a company he started called Westport Woodworks. His garage workshop is his refuge. It's where he built elaborate play sets, like this pirate ship for his young sons. He's also volunteered his talents, constructing personalized play sets for sick children through the Make-A-Wish Foundation. In 2020, he got the idea for his next project. So I was driving with my son, my oldest son, and I was thinking, how cool would it be to build an Adirondack chair for a smaller child? It seemed like the perfect project for me to start on. First, we use the jigsaw to shape the arms of the chair. You're gonna place the board on here, uh -huh. holding it tight, keeping your hands away from the blade. Keenan demonstrates, then it's my turn. I'm gonna have to clean that one up a little bit. <laughs> clean that one up just a smidge. Just, just a smidge. smidge. Next, we use something called a router to smooth the edges. See that? Now we have a nice round. Oh, wow. Edge. And this one, you can feel the difference. Yeah. So it gives it that nice rounded edge, no sharp corners. My turn. Wow. Much smoother. It's much smoother. To speed things up, Keenan has pre-cut all the pieces we need to assemble the chair. So the, the entire chair is in front of us? Correct. Okay. 
Our first step is going to be driving some screws in here. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna attach this piece right like so, just like that. Just like that? Yep. This is, a, this is cathartic. Oh, it is. This is cathartic. But we talk as we work about our lives and our families. The minutes slip by, and you can start to see the chair take shape. All right, here it here is. Here we go, here we go. Yes! There you go. I am now a woodworker. Great not, job. Not really, Great I know. Job. But th th here's the thing, this is a lot of fun. Yeah. And it's also really cool to be able to look and see something that you've created. Yeah, you, you know? This. Working with my hands, learning something new, taking the time for myself. I help build a chair and so much more. I want my kids to be able to like see dad make something. Dad did that. How cool would that be? We're back on the boost with a trip to one of Al's favorite neighborhood gems to help make their TikTok famous Coke floats. You ready for the Coke float? I'm ready. All right, go in there. That's Thank the Coke float place. Coke floats, Coke floats for everybody. Yeah. At nearly a century old, the Lexington Candy Shop has stood at the corner of Lexington and East 83rd Street since 1925. Founded by Soterius Phyllis, a Greek immigrant, his son Pete joined the family business in 1930. Not much has changed over the years, except now people are lining up just to get in. And you'll find John behind the counter, the third generation Phyllis, who now owns the business with his partner, Bob Karcher. Your father was here, your grandfather was here. Did you think you were gonna end up running the place? I started working here when I was 14. Now it's 2023, 20, and I'm still here. I, I like it. You know, I like the food, I like the customers and the environment. How did it get named the Lexington Candy Shop? Because you, you don't really sell that much candy. No, but when my grandfather started in 1925, they were making candies downstairs. And a lot of the Greeks went into the candy business, and we did too, and that was it. You walk in and there are regulars. I mean, what keeps people coming here to the Lexington candy shop? The ones that come every day, we know them. We don't have Wi-Fi because we want people to talk. These days, both regulars and new customers are talking even more about the iconic luncheonette's Coke floats. I can see what everyone waits for. After popping on social media, this post alone went viral with 45 million views. Wow, beautiful. 
within the hours. People were coming here, the next day went viral. And I'm a star. <laughs> we're, we're both stars right here. <laughs> John says that the luncheonette used to sell on average about 50 of these sweet treats a week. How many are you making now? A week? Probably about a thousand. Wow. I live in the neighborhood and I'm, I'm walking around. Oh, I see these lines. What has that been like for you guys? Besides the fact it's, it's stunning, <laughs> it's very tiring, but we like it. For two years with COVID, we were trying to get through it. Now, we got it, we're here, and we're making up for it, so to speak. We used to get one shipment of ice cream a week. Now we're getting three or four. <laughs> <laughs> I will admit, I don't think I've ever had a Coke float. Can you show me how you make a Coke float? That's what you're gonna do. We'll do it together. We're ready to go. Time to head straight to the pint for the scoop. Right. This is the way that we were doing it 100 years ago. Wow. All right, I think I remember that. First, John giving me a quick tutorial. Three, Three four, 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 five, five six. six. And you're stirring while you do it. Vanilla. Of course. <laughs> of course. And a nice little plop. Now it's my turn. I pump the Coca-Cola syrup into a glass. One, two, three, four, five, six. Then add seltzer and stir. Oh, he's good. Look at this. Next, ice cream. Mm -hmm. Finally, I top it off with a spritz of seltzer. <laughs> That's living. <laughs> We saw Dylan at Fenway, and it looks like she has another new career in the bag, learning how to make custom purses. Check it out. This is Anthony Luciano's studio, right here in Manhattan's Garment District. Anthony has been a leather craftsman and admired accessory designer for nearly 25 years. What is it about handbags that you like? I say handbags are a piece of art with a handle. Who have we seen carrying your bags? Meryl Streep has carried something at the Oscars. Mm -hmm. Judith Light is a really great client. Today, he's putting me to work for one of his sip and stitch classes. So what kind of accessories will people make at a sip and stitch class? Usually we make a really simple little card case. Then we do a little simple crossbody wallet. For, for today, we're going to do something special. We're going to do this larger bag. Oh, nice. Yep. I need a new bag. Everybody needs a new bag. <laughs> cheers to a sip, and then you'll teach me how to stitch? Yes, cheers okay. to that. I love, I love it. it. First, we picked out fabrics. So you're going to need to figure out what you'd like for the outside first. Okay. This is just like intriguing. And my grandmother was obsessed with roosters. Or do I go with something more practical, more every day? That yeah. matches all my outfits, but that's not fun. OK, but right, that's a little boring. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to steer you away from boring. Let's go wild. Let's, Let's do it. Let's do it. What kind of material do you look for for the inside of a bag for longevity? I usually use suede. It does wear really well. So these are the colors you want. A pop of color. Yeah, I think so. Beautiful wine. Color. This looks nice. It right. changes the whole it vibe. It changes the whole vibe. This is nice, nice too, because it does pick up some of the greens mm -hmm. here. I think I, I kind of like this wine color. I like that too. Yeah. Next, we cut each fabric into a standard purse shape. Fortunately, Anthony has a stencil for that. Very nicely done with your finger placement along oh, the edge. Oh, thank you. I feel like I'm with my son. Like, stay in the lines. No. <laughs> Yay, ta -da. Then we glue the inner suede to a filler layer that will give the purse shape and add the exterior leather on top of that. But you want to be even, so not too so much, not, not too much, and not too little okay. because you want you don't want any bubbles. Mm -hmm. Take a tool like this. Mm. Just so you... that on my face in the morning. Right? It's great. I don't know what it does, but I like it. It feels good. <laughs> it feels good. When everything dries, we punch holes where the grommets and buttons will eventually go. Oh, that's easier than it. Yeah. Squeeze it in there if you can. Cool. And we edge paint so my project wouldn't fall apart at the seams. I'm pretty hot in here, so I'm gonna cool myself down. Soon, it was assembly time. So we're gonna fold these, line up all the holes. And then it just goes together just like that? No way. There you go. There you go. And then and just screw this thing up. Oh my in. gosh, yes. We added straps for a crossbody look, and I have to say, I nailed it. And voila, my very own one-of-a-kind original. 
Look at my bag. Oh my God, look how cute that oh my is. Gosh, it is so adorable. <laughs> I love it so much. This bag just keeps getting better, better and better. And better. Welcome back to The Boost. This has been a really fun day today, and we've got some time for one last uplifting story. Check it out. It was a wedding surprise that brought the room to tears. So the groom and his mom were doing their traditional mother-son dance. They chose My Wish by Rascal Flatts. <laughs> but much to the groom's surprise, the song suddenly switched right in the middle. Take a look. That 1940s classic, You Are My Sunshine, that was the song, by the way, his mom sang to him every day when he was growing up. He had no idea that was coming. So a beautiful, sweet moment and a super sweet day. Well, that will do it for us. Thank you so much for joining us on The Boost. We hope you had as much fun as we did today. And we will see you right back here tomorrow on Today All Day. Happy Friday. Welcome to Pop Start Plus. I'm Joe Fryer. Here at Today, we take Halloween very seriously. In fact, our anchors have been dressing up in costumes since 1994, almost 30 years. In honor of the tradition, all month long, we're going to be looking back at the best of today's Halloween reveals. Plus, we'll show you everything that goes into one of today's biggest days of the year. Let's get started in 2019. The Today anchors went all out as their favorite on-screen dancers making for quite the reveal. Take a look.
Time we've had two Travoltas. I know. Yeah. Well, we hey. do celebrate. Hey, we talk about Jenna right. for just one yes. hour. Baby, nobody puts her in a corner. No. 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 By the way, I left my baby just to be here with y'all. Oh, because yeah. I love Halloween. We are so thrilled you're here, and I, I knew Peter had moves in wow. the day. That was impressive. Wow. Peter, you showed your A. I haven't broken out since the bar mitzvah circuit. Even with the mustache? Yeah. Wow, the anchors really do get into character. That year, they got quite the surprise for all of their hard work. Check it out. Maybe it's the real Sandy. Take a look. <gasps> oh, wow. No. Hi, Savannah. This is Olivia Newton-John, and I'm standing here with my Sandy 2 outfit from Greece. And I heard a rumor that you're going to dress up as me for Halloween. So here's some tips for you. Just act saucy, have a cigarette and hang out in your mouth. No, that's not cool now, right? So you can't do that anymore. <laughs> But red high heels, lots of red lipstick, curly hair, and lots of attitude. Have fun. That's amazing. How about that? Thanks for looking at Johnson. That's incredible. incredible. We appreciate it. That's a you nailed all of those things, which would be very happy. Thank you, who, Olivia. Who could possibly do the Carlton better than Al Roker? Perhaps, perhaps Ooh. Alfonso himself. Oh, wow. Nice. No. Hey, uh, Al, Will, Alfonso here. I think that is the perfect idea for Halloween. You've got to wear some pretty cool costumes. It might as well be Will and I, right? I mean, Will, Al, it just totally makes sense. Have a great Halloween, guys. Nice. Nice. All right, you did I, got, just I got the message to top all messages. Okay. Someone who really brought her rhythm. Oh. She practiced for hours. She no, 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 no. Al Jones, no. this yes. one's for you. Oh. This is amazing. I'm going to cry. Hey, Chanel, thank you so much for thinking of me and Rhythm Nation this year. Man, I cannot believe that it's been 30 years since that album was released, but I'm so glad you're still enjoying it. Oh Happy God. Halloween. Yeah. That is awesome. Those are real tears. Yeah. You know, you were so good at Janet Jackson. Oh, I used you, to try to be her in my basement. You are her. You are. You are on stage. Oh, my God. Thanks to Janet Jenna, for that message. Jenna, 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 what did you think of my performance? This is Gina. Touch that again. She can't talk, but she liked it. Yeah, yeah. performance was a little wooden. You fooled everybody. I, we were all waiting, and then yeah. when you did the man, no. By the we way, didn't it. want anybody to throw out a bat. You know There's nothing better, by the way, than having Jenna Bushhager yeah. back with yeah. 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 so happy yeah. to so love you. That was awesome. When we're back, Team Today reflects on their groovy moves. Stay with us.
welcome back. Today's annual Halloween extravaganza is quite the production, and it's always cool to see the anchors reflect on their performances. After the gang transformed into their favorite on-screen dancers, they looked back at how well they did on stage. Craig looks. I'm not, he looked with the mustache. I said, Craig should show his son that picture and say, this is what you're going to look like in 12 years. Yeah. Yeah. I hope not. Well, we can always try out the picture with the violin. Oh, wow. uh, hey, so. Peter, you were talk fantastic. Talk about her. Peter. 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 Wow. Peter. Wow. Peter. Peter. A, big, good. a big thanks to my daughters for being my choreographers as we practiced this for last week. <laughs> wow, let's take a look. I want to see. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. How long did you work on this dance? Uh, so I practiced it going the wrong direction. This morning they're like, you're supposed to go right. I'm like, I can I only go right. I can only go one way. <laughs> so good. Anyway, that was, so that was so much fun. That was terrific. That's a 10. All right. So hey, fun. Then Dylan, <laughs> oh, Dylan our, oh. your inner Elaine I, came I busting out. So much. Along with something else. <laughs> Well, I didn't have the baby, so that's good. <laughs> but it's funny because this is pretty much how I dance. It's so good. It really wasn't a whole lot of. So funny, Dylan. You wasn't a lot of practice. That was great. Sweet and, fancy. And I love our staff behind giving that's you the sign. Yeah, yes. that was good. Oh, Nobody was dancing with me. I don't know why. You know, it was so funny this morning. morning. Because everybody was stunned. I saw Breen back there. That's this morning right. when Dylan was practicing, the baby was kicking like crazy. I know. Literally. Th that episode's called Little Kicks, and I was getting oh, little kicks. Oh, little that's that's good. Good. Baby yeah. likes it. All right, come on, Willie. Oh, I gotta see this one. And Gina, the mannequin. Yeah, let's not be proud. Yeah, this was the moment. Oh, this is great. so funny. Oh, no. We <laughs> directed this well, too. That that is not done. Right? Right? They did a great and job. And then... <laughs> Wait for it. <laughs> wow. I look so look. good right after having a baby. I right? do, gosh. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Well, uh oh, uh oh. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. So a little bit too much of the man. She forgot it was morning too. Uh, Credit to I our think... director, Jimmy Gaines, because that's a tough cut. Yeah, yeah, he nailed it. He nailed it. He nailed it. Right. He nailed it. Right. He did. Well, I think the winner of the winner. Halloween oh yeah. is yeah. Chanel. Yeah. Janet Jackson. Were you a dancer? So I used to, there are a lot of girls watching who used to take dance lessons growing up. I was in Kansas. And everybody tried to be Janet Jackson. The key, yeah. earring, the hoop. Oh, good. Everyone tried, but not everyone can do it. Yeah. You did it. Uh, I mean, you were all in. It was now. so. Did you have to work at that at all, or is it that now? Yeah, so we practiced with the dancers her. one time. What? They, yes. That's cool. That you only did that one time? So we practiced with the dancers one time, and then but they did it on my phone. backwards. Right, so I got here this morning, and I had it backwards, because uh -huh. I practiced on a phone. Uh -huh. Oh, just like years. Peter. Just like and look at the costume. Like, that costume is spectacular. That is spectacular. So, Philip, one of our costume designers, is a huge Janet. Fan, so he it's went amazing. down it's unreal. to the detail. That's I mean, they even wear that tonight. Keep this on for tonight. Right? Yeah. Keep that on. Tonight, yeah. 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 Jackson, Halloween. if you know. Philip is wearing a Janet Jackson t shirt. Oh, he's hardcore. Yeah. 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 He's for real. And then John this one. No one yeah. plays a man like Hodakai. Oh Eddie <laughs> Munster. Take a look. Eddie grown up. You're the dance Yes, Hoda. But you make it fun. If I can thank all of us. You know I didn't. Proof is in the pudding right there. Those are your moves. Oh, wow. It's just fun. Yes. It was really fun. You guys, there's something about dancing in the rain. I didn't I care. It yes. was yeah. such I know. fun today. Man. It was oh my so God. good. And yes. of course, we had a second John Travolta. <laughs> yeah. right. A couple of cleft chins. With Savannah here. and Carson, a little grease light. His chins right here. His chins. We had so Wait, much Carson, fun. you got to give my me your voice. Oh, oh, yes. Uh -huh. yes. yes. So good. Listen what? to Carson's voice. Go for it, Carson. Sandy. Hey, Sandy. You look so hot. That was fun. We, we actually worked at that, too. We did. Yeah, yeah, so believe it or not. Chanel practiced once for this incredible for dance. We're just stepping, and it took us like five practices to go. All I know is that no you have the hottest costume. Yeah, I was going to yeah. say, no, yeah. no, no, but, yeah. Yeah. no, but Sandy's heels in the yeah. rain. Yeah. Yeah. Are enough. you going to go home with that for Mike? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. He's, He's not even watching. Um, by the way, we thanked, cool. the, we thanked a bunch of folks at the yeah. bottom of the hour. We uh -huh. should also thank our crew in the studio and yeah. outside. Yeah. Yes. These guys have been up all night. Yes. They have to keep the stage yes. dry. Yes. Thank it's quite the feat. So a big thanks to everybody. It's right, quite the production. The whole, yeah. So we wanted to do, since it's Thursday and it's Halloween, we figured we'd do a little Halloween edition of Throwback mm -hmm. Thursday. Mm -hmm. So some of you have seen these pictures, some of you have not. But Mr. Geis, we'll start with you. We'll throw the picture up and you'll tell us what this, this is. This is me at five years old, height oh, of Star oh. Wars. And what's great about that is my mom sewed that oh, costume for oh. me. We bought the mask, but she made the Chewie costume oh, right hey. in the middle of Star Wars mania. So that's Chewie! Sweet. Chewie. That's cool. Yeah. 
Uh, I think we got your JBH. Yours is from oh, a couple years ago with Savannah. Well, yeah, yeah this, oh, is this is my favorite. One. I prefer to dress funny. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> this is um, when Savannah surprised everybody for maternity leave, That's and we wore right. long jeans. I know. That was, I guess, five years ago. Wow. I was just wow. coming back from an August baby, and we did mom jeans. She called me and said, hey, do you want to put on mom jeans? And I said, they fit just perfect. <laughs> <laughs> from mom <laughs> jeans to that? JBH, yes. wow. yes. you, you got another one, too. Uh -huh. There we are. Oh, yeah. That's amazing. Oh, I... My mom made me a costume, too, which Aww. with this juicy fruit. Um, you can't see the box. It's made out of cardboard box. And my grandpa dressed up as a president. The point. Well, hold up. Oh, which picture well, is this? You know, this one. This one is one of my favorites. It's the hideous. Most of these I've ever been. <laughs> and you only know, had to change one letter. It's really good, though. And by the way, I put lipstick on because I felt so gross. I was like, <laughs> I need something. <laughs> and it's oh, yeah. That's why you had lipstick. Yeah. Oh, How I long did that nice. take? It took forever. Those guys. I mean, that was like one of those molds and the whole. Wow. Yeah. That's yeah. impressive. Yeah. This is. Uh, we got one for you from 2008, I believe. Let's see this one. Oh, this is a good one. Let's see. Uh, oh, oh wow. pity the fool. Oh, yeah, amazing. my favorite. I still, have, I still that's have the change. Is that still, that's your favorite that you've done? One of my favorites, yeah. Because I love Mr. T. Pretty good, Mr. T. I love Mr. Yeah. T. This Wait, is that Mohawk is legit. Oh yeah. yeah. This yeah. is uh, this is mine from last year. You know, every year our, our family Aww. goes. We pick a family thing. My What's mother, this year? My mother-in-law sews these costumes every year. So oh, last year we were a family of. Oh yeah. Wow. Takes her. What are you guys doing this year? Um, I don't think I can tell. Oh, okay. Oh, it's a surprise. Secret. Because we'll I think the kids. So it's to surprise the kids. Okay. Oh, so they don't even know what they're wearing. No. Wow. That's cool. That's a cool tradition. How about you? Your house. How about you? Um, you so I couldn't find any childhood pictures, but I found one from the first time I ever danced in front of people, like on a show, and it was in Philly. This was about oh, what? Yeah, so many years oh, ago. I was Beyonce. Oh, oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I noticed a the theme. Oh, ringer. Yeah. That was so. <laughs> I just take people I admire and then just Dance watch them on like YouTube them. and yeah. try to. Tina yeah. Turner last year. It's like my tribute. It's yeah. Yeah. I just noticed this earring. That's it? amazing. Right? It's legit. And it's heavy. <laughs> wow. Cool. God, what about you, D Dry? Um, I had to go through. So, growing up in New Jersey, it was always freezing cold mm -hmm. on, on Halloween. So, my mom just basically layered me up in whatever she could. So, this costume was just a turtleneck and some pajamas. <laughs> <laughs> but, but tape a star to a pole, Aww. and I'm a princess. So, princess. so yeah. Cutie. I like it. Thank you. How about you? Well, today, as you're watching television, everybody does their big Halloween shows, like talk shows. You'll see mm -hmm. Ellen, Kelly Clarkson, the big Halloween extravaganza. So, back in the day, 10 years ago, when I had a talk show, <laughs> I dressed up like some grapes, and um, <laughs> that's, that's one of my favorite that's American, that's Kevin Smith, one of my yeah. favorite uh, American so filmmakers, cool. and, no um, and yeah, so that's fun. Why, why grapes? Is there <laughs> uh, it was just like the bigger the better, just kind of, yeah. you know, More just ridiculous. fun, a little different. Like yeah. a when you world. can't dance like Janet Jackson, you do grapes. Yeah. <laughs> I do the grapes. What about you, Pete? So uh, my mom, we, I grew up in Oakland, California. My mom made all of our costumes. She's right. in town. I'm like, so they want some old childhood pictures of Halloween. She's like, I happen to have 15. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, here's, here's us as a kid. My brother and sister, me, as clowns Aww. and cats. Cute. His kids, Kevin and Beck on the right and left, and me in the middle. Like, that's so classic. Yeah. That, that's me in the middle with a bowl cut. She literally, I mean, it's, it's a real bowl cut. Yeah. Back, just sure. chop it yeah. around. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. That's not a wig. Costumes is really that shaming. Was, that, yeah. Yeah. I know. My mom I know. would be like, just go in my closet and put on something. <laughs> yeah. I mean, now yeah. I'm on Amazon. Well, here, Calvin. Get some heels. It certainly does take a lot of courage. When we're back, a surprise guest joined the third hour crew in studio for Halloween. You will not believe who stopped by 1A. You don't want to miss it.
Welcome back to Pop Start Plus. Here at Today, we love a surprise almost as much as we love Halloween. So how about a Halloween surprise? In 2019, the Third Hour Gang welcomed a mystery trick-or-treater to Studio 1A. Take a look. The J. Peterman Catalog. Hey. It's your boy! Hey. Let me see. Let me John see. O'Hurley. That's Let me see. awesome. That's it. Remember, you have to kind of torque the body, torque the body, and then the legs have to go off like you're kicking them out of your hips. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Oh, this is so fun. Missing a chair? I have going to get a bring, chair. Gonna bring one in. You're going to get oh, a chair? Awesome. I don't need a chair. Come on, I'll we just got make one. Up, Good to see you again. How are you, my How friend? Happy Halloween. Hi. I'm Miss Jackson. Spectacular. <laughs> just fantastic. Oh, my God. So How are you all? How perfect is this? Isn't this fun? I hear that Intamin's Cake <laughs> episode is, is one of your favorites. Yes, I think that was one. Well, it, it contained so many different things. That was the Frogger episode, remember? Where, oh, yes. That where, was a good episode. Where George had the Frogger record on <laughs> his machine, and he turns to Jerry and says, Jerry, I've got to protect that, because he says, <laughs> he says I'm never nice going to have kids. <laughs> <laughs> and, I, I, and I always thought that was kind of the most heart-wrenching moment in, in, the entire, uh, in the entire series. They don't totally play that did. one on repeat enough. No? No. no well, we'll it's, it's the Frogger episode is not one you see that often. I have, uh, I have a lot of control over that. So That's I'm funny. Not sure that okay. Happens. And you told us the last time that you didn't have a traditional audition. Is that right? With the script? You were just handed the J. Peterman catalog? They, well, they hadn't finished the script. They, uh, so they passed me the, the, the catalog, and they said, we just want him to sound the way the catalog was written. Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh, and, and I said, well, it, it kind of reads like a bad 40s radio drama and a bit of a bad <laughs> Charles Kuralt. Could you, could you <laughs> read from the catalog for us? Yeah, we're, we're Go. Do we Carrie, have it? Do you, the catalog? Oh, we have it. Yes. Nice. Okay, I've never seen an actual J. Peterman catalog <laughs> neither. before. Oh, my gosh. Here you're you're going to have me do this without my glasses? Is oh, they are reaction. really There's no there. way I can read this without <laughs> my glasses. It's small print. Really yeah, glasses it's, around here. Uh, yeah, I got somebody's running to get glasses, I, I see think. some reading. Mm, uh, well, <clears throat> a wealthy mer- Hold on just a second. <laughs> Everybody's running in this. <laughs> We've got reading glasses. We've got some other options here. You don't have these in a blue, do you? In the wealthy merchant's home in Florence, Italy, circa 1485. (laughs) Lots of rich silk and velvet fabrics, ornate carved furniture, glowing (laughs) silver, all designed to impress. But it is this austere and amazingly advanced object that makes a visitor's jaw drop. Oh, so good. Hey, you, you actually now are a part owner of the J. Peterman Company, right? You know, that's the most bizarre thing. It is, yes. It's like, uh, I like the role so much, I bought the company. <laughs> <laughs> I did, actually, in 2000. So is this a legit actually catalog? It, yeah. it, no, it's a legit catalog with legit products. Oh, J. Peterman. I've actually that's ordered awesome. from this. J. Peterman, is, JPeterman.com. Is that's a Himalayan catalog. walking shoe in oh, there. Well, some things are not. <laughs> but we actually, you know, we did produce the... Um, uh, Urban Sombrero. You did. We made about ten of them. Auctioned the first one. I auctioned off for charity. Went for like seventy five hundred dollars. Wow. wow. Isn't that great? Yeah. This is, there's some good stuff in here too. Yeah, it really yeah. is. Yeah, I'll tell you. We hear Halloween's big in your house. <laughs> well, it's big because of my wife. My wife is the Halloween architect. <laughs> A month before. Halloween begins, we start to discuss what oh, Will, wow. our son Will is going to wear, wow. and then she begins to just get this idea inside of her, and she produces some of the most amazing costumes you've ever seen, but Did they are, uh, oh, ho, ho, is everything. Is Pac-Man? Looking at, looking at that's, uh, that's Pac-Man right there, oh, my yes. Uh, that's pa- Pac-Man that's awesome. is... Yeah, isn't that something? Yeah. That, that, can you that see? was papier mache? Uh, that is, but uh, paper mache, yeah. Papier, pa- papier mache. Papier mache. Look wow, at how French. Look at the two, <laughs> the, the, two, the, two the men are born. Uh, and this is uh, Mr. Potato Head. Oh, look, look at that. that. Oh, that's, that's impressive. Great. These are, are just awesome. extraordinary costumes. Uh-huh. Did you get a costume also? Uh, no, you know, I gave up. I gave up because I hit the quint- quintessential Halloween costume years ago. I went as the West Side Highway. Ah. <laughs> I wore <laughs> spandex. I had cars sewn down all the way this side, all the way down there. Then I sewed cars all the way up the leg. Wow. And none here and none there because the accident was right in the middle. (laughs) Oh, okay. John O'Hurley, what a great guy. We'll be right back.
thanks for sticking with us. It has been awesome to look back at today's Halloween reveal from Al as Carlton Banks to Chanel as Janet Jackson. The anchors really knocked it out of the park in 2019. We'll be back next week to look at more great looks. Have a great week. This morning, best-selling cookbook author and chef, our friend Padma Lakshmi. That's right. Her latest cookbook is out right now, and it's called Tomatoes for Neela. And this morning, she's got some great ideas to share for healthy winter dishes. Padma, <clears throat> first of all, it's great to see you. And the ingredient we're starting with that we're focusing on is kale. It's like one of those superfoods. Yes, that's right. It is kale. I love kale. I try to throw it in every dish I have because it's a great hearty but healthy winter uh, green. You know, what I love about kale is that it's great raw, it's great wilted with dressing the next day. It's also wonderful cooked. It has a ton of vitamins, it has vitamin A, it has vitamin C, folate, it has vitamin B, vitamin K, it has a ton of antioxidants. It also has omega-3 uh, fatty um, acids, calcium, potassium, you name it. Okay, and wow. so ways you can use this hearty, hearty winter green. So I have two kinds of kale here. This is curly kale, mm -hmm. which you guys probably are familiar with. There's lots of uh, types of kale. And then I have this, which is called dragon kale. Dragon kale. kale. Uh, in Italian, it's called lacinato kale. Mm -hmm. And this is the kale that I like the best. You just want to take the center stem and strip that off and then just chop it. What I like to do is buy the kale whole, take, wash it, dry it on kitchen towels, take that center stem off and chop it up and then put it in a bag and leave it in my crisper so it's always ready oh. for me to throw into um, all my soups and salads. You know, sometimes those lettuces are great. Mm -hmm. You don't finish your salad, you have to throw out the salad. Whereas if you have a salad made with kale, mm -hmm. instead of those lettuces, which are mostly water and are still great, but don't have the same nutrients, you can have that salad for two or three days. Hey, Padma, some people, I heard some people massage the kale. Mm -hmm. do you, did you do that? Uh, I don't massage the kale. I just chop it fine. <laughs> you ain't fancy. All right, so, so what, what are we making? What I'm doing, we're going to bounce around with some recipes just because I'm cooking here. So I have sauteed some just plain yellow onion mm -hmm. with a little cumin seeds and some oil and two red chilies. You see that? Uh -huh. Those are are sauteing and to that I'm going to add some minced ginger mm. and some minced garlic and that is going into some lentils also called dal which we'll make in a minute but I just want to get that going um, so it browns and cooks nicely. To that I'm adding a little bit of ground turmeric. You see that? I feel like I'm doing one of those beauty Instagram <laughs> And so I'm going to saute this and let that go. 
And while that's going, I'm going to show you this salad. Look at this beautiful Yum. salad. Ooh. The mozzarella? Chickpeas. Ready on today. So uh, for you guys a while back on another holiday season, it's just simple. Pomegranate, pearl mozzarella, mm. the mint, some serrano. Mm. It's dressed so basically with just olive oil, balsamic, and lime juice. I'm going to take that salad and I'm going to add a bunch of chopped kale to it. And this salad then becomes more hearty yeah. and it lasts much longer than any other salad would. And it's filling. Frankly, this would make a great lunch to take to the office or to school the next day. Um, my daughter, Krishna, takes this salad when she's got a field trip and she's the envy of all her mm. teachers. I What's the dressing that. on that? Yeah, and the dressing will wilt the um, kale so that it'll be beautiful the next day. All the juices mm -hmm. from the mozzarella and the pomegranate season that kale with the dressing. And look how beautiful that is. Mm. It's don't, you also love the, don't you love the kale? Because it, it even wilted or even chopped up like that, it holds up against yeah. the dressings and sauces. It, it stays robust and doesn't wilt away. Exactly. Now you can see how these onions and ginger and garlic are frying and breaking down. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we got about 10 or 15 seconds. I would add pancetta to yeah. that, but that's me. Yeah. So I'm just going to add some tomato to that. Uh -huh. And here I have some yellow lentils. Oh, that yeah. I love, love those. Those. Salt. I'm adding kale to that. Uh -huh. hey, like, I want that. this. I want this for me breakfast. Too. A stew, which is Yum. basic. But you could do chicken or beef, and I'm adding kale to that. Love it. There you go. Thank you, Padma. Padma, Padma. We got to run. Yummy. We got to run. But all of these dishes are going to be on our website. Looks real good. Today.com slash food. And we're back with Today Food and Season Chef Alfred Portale. His illustrious career includes 35 years as the executive chef at New York's iconic Gotham Bar and Grill, where he earned a Michelin star and among other great accolades there. Now Chef Portale is at the helm of his own restaurant in Chelsea, Portale, an upscale, casual Italian restaurant. Chef, it's great to have you here. Nice to how's, be here. how's this chapter of your, this new chapter in your culinary career? Uh, the restaurant is fantastic. You know, people go there, it's got great food, great wine list. It's, I feel like I'm hosting a, a dinner party every night. Where made you want to leave Gotham after s such a long reign? You know, I, I, I always wanted to do Italian and uh, here we are. So um, I have had a great time. I read your mom and your grandmother, you're from Buffalo, would cook Italian food for you growing up. That's right, that's but right. But how, how was it different? They used American ingredients? Um, well, to, to some extent, to yeah. some extent. In fact, this recipe uh, that we're making today is something my mom used to make on Fridays. Because oh, cool. growing up, we couldn't eat meat on Fridays. Right, so. right, Lent. All right, so what are we making? Wow. Um, we're making a pesto, uh, an arugula pesto, so a little different. Okay. It starts with blanching. We blanch the herbs first. And now what that does is it, uh, it sets the color. So you get a nice, really bright, bright, looking pesto and smooth. So we let these blanch. So it's not even really about cooking things off and stopping the cooking, it's just about preserving the color? And... Yeah, we're setting the color exactly. Wow. And it'll give us a, a beautiful, beautifully colored pesto. And if you don't have arugula, can you substitute that? Absolutely. Uh, increase the other herbs or um, I would use spinach, spinach something yeah. else. All right. Okay, so next, the ingredients. Uh, could, could you yep. some. You, you can be little, in charge little, of little this. zesting? Yeah, in the blender I have some capers. So we'd put that we'd put the green in here though, right? Yeah, I've got them right here. So okay, we're gonna, perfect. we're gonna add that. Just a little bit. That's good. That's got good. it. We add the blanched herbs. A touch of that. And I have uh, anchovy, garlic. We have our eating table over there. No, quiet, normally. and that's a good sign. That means they're already eating this delicious okay, meal. Okay, so normally we would put the top on. I've got some extra virgin olive oil, and, okay. and you want to add this in a steady stream to emulsify. Wow, it's going to be, okay. To save some time, we're going to yep, skip that enough. step. Yep. And here's our pasta. Um, what pasta? Just you want spaghetti? We're using spaghetti today. Bucatini, angel hair, it's great. Bucatini. So we, I'm not draining the pasta because I want some of this pasta water. Wow, oh, look at that, guys. That's okay. how you do it. That's the pro move go. right there. And why do we like the pasta water, chef? Why do we? Okay, add a little more pasta water. Remind everybody the importance of the pasta water, adding it. You like it spicy? Yeah. Some Calabrian chili. <laughs> yep. <laughs> and here's our pesto. This makes it creamy, I think. The yeah. pasta yeah, water it just kind of keeps the... It helps emulsify the sauce. Uh-huh. Add some cheese. And it's that simple. Oh, a little bit of arugula. And we'll wilt that in. Yeah. Wow. You typically, chef, add pasta to the sauce or sauce to the pasta, just in general. 
<laughs> like do, do people, yeah, I mean, I see people just do what you do, where you put the pasta in here and then you just add the sauce into it. Yeah, yeah. Well, you always wanted to cook a little bit, in, to cook the, the pasta. Cook it in, in the, the sauce. sauce a little so we keep bit. Okay. the pasta al dente. Yeah. And then we finish okay. it in the pan. So we that is a beautiful, light, summery. Let me take a bite of this, guys. How is it? Those tomatoes. Dilly. They're just like popping. Yeah. Oh, the tomatoes. You know, we kind of, the tomatoes are simply roasted in the oven. Oh. How long? About 20 minutes, 30 oh, minutes. Delicious. What happens so is it, it concentrates the flavor. It's yeah. delicious. That's all you did to it. What do you think, Oda? It's you know, so yummy. Uh, it's I mean, great. Craig play. made this point. It's not too pesto-y, right. which is really good. And, right. Chef, I don't know how you did that. I don't, I don't know what part in the process, but you can taste the lemon. You can taste the anchovy. Yeah. There's nothing overwhelming. It's great. Yeah. Thank you. Thank yummy. you. And uh, we're going to add a little olive. If you don't olives. like olives. Mm. Nice. Put less in, but Pop here we go. Flavor. And then we, we're going to finish with a little bit more cheese. This is how you do it. This is right. you want this experience. You find yourself in the Chelsea neighborhood of New York. Okay. Go to Portale and see our friend chef here is going to make you a meal Thank just you. like this. Yummy. It is delicious. All right. So do that. And if you can want to make this recipe, if you're at home, you go to today.com/food. I have a feeling a lot of people are going to be making this one tonight. Yeah. Chef, thank you so much. This morning on Today Food, two amazing Italian meals you can make this week, you can make them tonight. Here with us today is Laura Vitale, cookbook author and host of Laura in the Kitchen. Laura, good morning. Good morning. Sometimes, you know, a nice big Italian meal feels like something you save for Sundays, but yeah. this is like a really quick, easy meal. It's so quick, it's so easy. It's actually two things that I can get my very picky daughter to eat. Oh. So I feel like it would be super family friendly. No, I'm all ears. Um, and Hidden spinach really always easy. goes a long way. Yeah, too. we're oh. gonna start off with some chicken meatballs. Okay. And I make them really easy, but I have to make them flavorful because I think ground chicken can be so dry. Yes. So in a bowl, if you would, yes, add a little bit of garlic. A little garlic, okay. Yes, and a little garlic. A pinch of Italian seasoning. Oh, just a pinch. Just right. a pinch. I like to add some frozen chopped spinach. Make sure you thaw and like squeeze out really all that liquid. It, okay. it adds not only moisture, but it also adds extra vitamins that I know my kid will eat. Exactly. Because once it's covered in a, in a yummy Parmesan sauce, yeah. she won't know that it's right. in there. It's just delicious. Egg, Parmesan cheese, breadcrumbs, a little salt and pepper, and you're okay. gonna mix it all together. Mm -hmm. Um, can you overmix kind of chicken like you can with beef? Does it make it tough? Not really. Okay. Not really. I've never found that to be an issue whatsoever. Great. You mix it together, and then at this point, if you want to, you can form your meatballs, which I like to use. A scooper? A scooper. To make sure they're all the same yeah, size. Yeah, make sure that they're all the same size. And I also don't like to get my hands dirty. Um, <laughs> and this is a great, actually, it's a great thing. You roll them up, and then you can actually freeze them like this. Oh. So that you have they're them good ready. To go whenever you need them. If you do a double batch, so that when you have another late night dinner to put Ooh. together, you can Perfect. thaw them out. So when it comes time. time to cook them, do you? So then I I put them in the oven. I just okay. throw them in a hot oven 420 minutes and they're perfect. And okay. then you make the sauce by sweating out some shallots and garlic. Mm -hmm. Make those then shallots sweat. Yes. <laughs> then you add some tomatoes. Okay. Ooh, that is yummy. And then you'll do a little bit of wine, chicken stock, a little bit of cream. All of this? Or? Yes, all of okay. it. And then let that reduce until it's really nice and thick. And then when the sauce is ready, you add your meatballs back in until they are sort of warm through. Ooh, and then clean that too. is like it. it. Doesn't taste Heavy. No, it's super, they're super light, and I attribute that to the spinach. Oh, wow. yeah. I attribute that to the spinach. And yeah, they're not mm. dense. They're right. really no, good. Not at all. I need to get into the meatball. How about I this can't pasta? Wait. This pasta is oh, let's, right let's get, let's The pasta is next level, and so it's good. actually one of those recipes that I 
pulled oh, together wow, out delicious. of leftover things that I had in my fridge. Really? And all I, yeah, I had some open sun-dried tomatoes, which I don't know what to do with them a whole lot because they're mm -hmm. not my favorite thing to eat as is. So I added them to some sweating shallots and garlic. We're sweating shallots. Why do you sweating like this? I need to learn how to sweat shallots. They're, shallots. Yeah. they're a bit more mild and tender, and the pack usually has seven or eight, so I like to use them all oh, up. That's true. Could this you use onions or scallions? You can use onions, you can use shallots, and you can use green onions, any alien, really. Okay. Add your sun-dried tomatoes mm -hmm. along with a little bit of tomato sauce. That's why it has that taste. Yes, and then you do a little oregano, a little hot pepper oh, wow. flake, and then That's you'll so add. Easy. Then you'll add a little bit of the pasta oh, the water, water oh. and your rigatoni, mm. and then that pasta water you want it to get in there. Right. I'm gonna try this. And then, then that rigatoni is just rich and delicious. And then the best way to serve it, yeah, I saw is you do something really cool with a burrata. Oh, that is yummy. Mm. And then yeah. as you eat it, you would obviously yeah. add this to an entire giant serving, not just right. one. <laughs> right. Although I'm not judging. No. That is right. fine. A oh big my gosh. sprinkle of parm, a little additional hot pepper flakes for heat because I like things hot. And the burrata adds such and a creaminess so to it. Good. Look, so we good. almost finished it. And it's <laughs> easy. And it's easy. Oh, wow. And if you don't have sun dried tomatoes, skip them. And you could use any pasta if you any want. Any pasta, long, short, whatever kind of pasta. Yeah, good. Very oh, wow. forgiving. So good. I've never thought of just the fresh burrata as good? a yeah. sauce almost. It's it makes so its own good. sauce. It makes it creamy. Thank you. That is delicious. The secret sweating those shallots. Oh, yeah. That's a secret. Oh, uh, oh, wow. For Thank these you. recipes, it's today.com <laughs> slash food. We are back with a special Today Food for our Discover Black Heritage series. We are joined by one of our dear friends, the one, the only, Mr. Marcus Samuelson. He is the chef and owner behind several of New York's hottest restaurants, including a new one, Hav and Mar. It's a communal style spot that celebrates African roots in modern black cuisine. This morning, Chef Marcus is wrap, uh, wh whipping up one of his favorite dishes, yeah. lettuce wraps with mm. tamarind ginger roasted oh, pork yeah. and coconut spiced rice. Can I just tell you how I'm excited I am to cook with you? Mm. Black History Month, <laughs> but also cooking with you, Al. I'm just so excited that we're cooking together. It's been yeah. a while. We, you know, my yes. friend, we first met when you were at Aquavit in 1990. What's that? Child labor back then? <laughs> what, 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 Al? I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> you're dating yourself. I don't know what you're talking about. Like, I'm with hipsters. I'm with Chanel. Yeah, 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 you know, exactly. I'm with the hipsters. I'm with the kids. Not with the seniors here. Do you know that I play soccer with her husband? Oh, yeah. Really? Uche. Yeah, 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 no. He was, he, was he wearing his, oh, no. oh, his gosh, Wakanda unitone? Yeah, the oh, Wakanda. Oh, yeah. Anyway, oh, so Hav and Mar. Yeah, yes. Tell me about this restaurant. What Hav and Mar. Hav is the Swedish word and it means ocean. Mm -hmm. And Mar is Ethiopian word and it means honey. So sweet water, a mm. lot of focus on seafood, delicious food. But today, I was thinking about going back to your Bahamian roots. Well, thank you. This oh. is a dish that really has Caribbean influences. So we're okay. going to do slow roasted pork, okay. right? In the oven. In the oven okay. with tamarind glaze, Oh, right? Now, what's tamarind? Oh, tamarind is this super, super sort of, uh, it has these sour notes, right? A little so umami? Yes, yeah, so you find all over the Caribbean. Uh -huh. So we're going to put tamarind here, mm -hmm. in here, Okay. right? And then ginger, right, mm. and a little bit of garlic, a little bit of shallots. We're just mm -hmm. gonna let that simmer. And here comes the, the kicker: shrimp powder. Shrimp, shrimp powder. powder. I know. I've never heard Super of it. Super. That's um, that's where the umami comes from. Mm -hmm. Some honey and habanero. Do not touch it. This is spicy. Okay. Mm. Now you get that. You simmer that. that. We blend. Okay. And then we're gonna rub all of that on top of the pork. Mm -hmm. Boom. We're just gonna. Pour, pour, it pour it on. all on top of the pork. It'll be on the pork. Yes. Mm. And, and we're slow, put that in the oven? Yep. How put long? it in the oven long. It takes all day. Okay. But the slow and lower heat, eight hours. The lower you cook it, the better it's going to taste. Eight hours. Okay. Yes. So now we're going to make the coconut rice. Coconut rice. Again, mm. Caribbean notes. Right? Yes. And that's the beauty of Black History Month. Right? You can be inspired by things from Africa. You can be inspired by things from the Caribbean. Coconut milk? Coconut milk. Of course. Yeah. Of course. <laughs> mm. Little turmeric. Mm hmm you know that Savannah and I used to cook together too, but she ditched me right now. I don't know what happened. You're my I don't know. I don't know what happened. I don't know, I don't know what happened. You know what like they, we I, cooked together, we had a good thing going, and then we had a great thing and going. And yeah. in the middle of when we were cooking, she said, "I also cook with Bobby Flay." I was like, "What?" No, no, I, was I, was I was never with Bobby Flay. Savannah, Savannah will do the like that. Huh? <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay, no. So, so no, you get, no, no, no. Get... Marcus, they canceled my show. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. They got sick of me burning myself all the time. So you got the fork out. Yes. Yes. Now it's slow roasted. It's uh, delicious. Look at look this. At oh my God. And you can slice it, of mm. course. You can just rip it with a fork, right? just like this. Look at that. Or look at that. Look how moist it oh, is, right? Wow. Oh. I got a little. So you're going to shred some of that. Shred it mm -hmm. right here. 
Look at that. Oh, oh man. Some oh, of that wait, cinnamon I'll wait sauce. Wait yeah. Try this. You're so okay. Chanel and I had this plan, right. which was supposed to be a surprise, but we have a table for you and uh -huh. your wife mm -hmm. at Havmar, and we're gonna celebrate you out because wait. you know you deserve to be celebrated. That's right. Amen. I was very emotional today, cooking, knowing uh -huh. I cook with you. Uh -huh. And you know, we just we just Worth excited. It. So you'll you know? take the rice? Yes, the coconut rice. It's oh, such a lovely man. Layers yeah. of flavor. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, it really just, is. Yeah. So Listen, good. when your daughter comes back from Paris, mm -hmm. your dad <laughs> can have a new recipe oh, yeah. and show off. Look what I'm making. Exactly. Just, just a little pork with tamarind. This go. is what I've been up to. And you like to garnish it with a little yeah, parsley? Because we're fancy, you know, a little bit, a little bit of shallot, a mm. little bit of so that. Guys, what do you think? It I want more. I don't have any left. Wow. You know what I think? Listen. I think Marcus Samuelson is the most lovely, oh. talented, oh. and oh. charming person. You get a table, and you get a table, and you get a table, and you get a table. Oh. All That's is it. forgiven, Savannah. Yes, <laughs> all is forgiven. Just Marcus, it is truth. so good to see you. It's always good to see you. Thank you love so you. much. All right. So good. Hey, Thank check you. out so this good. recipe at today.com slash food. This morning, we are joined by two young women whose hearts are even bigger and warmer than the recipes they're cooking for us today. Moon Lin Tsai and Yin Chang are the founders of Heart of Dinner, a New York City nonprofit delivering warm meals to members of the Asian community who are isolated or elderly. You're, you're really going to get into the, the tradition of fish in Chinese culture. Yes. I mean, even the word for fish is yes. something special, right? Yes. Uh, yu is phonetically similar to a word that represents uh, prosperity Ooh. and abundance. So. That's great. Everything has meaning and everything has so much thought behind it. It can also be intimidating, though. I've never actually cooked with a whole fish before. <laughs> well, don't worry. She's, very... She's here, so I'm a little intimidated <laughs> as well. So thank goodness. So it's very simple. You'll start off with a whole fish. You don't want to fillet. You want to keep it full for abundance. And then what you're going to do is just pat it dry first. Mm -hmm. And this will work with any whole white flesh fish. Mm -hmm. and, and it's got to get scaled, right? Got to get scaled and oh. clean. Yeah, okay. patting it dry is really important so that oil doesn't fly all over the place. Oh. Okay. And right now I am julienning the ginger, and this is so delicious to add depth and flavor and complexity. Um, so then right now after we're done and you're gonna cut it into little matchstick size pieces, mm -hmm. we're gonna bring the fish over to the steamer here okay. as well. And a lot of times your fishmonger will clean it and gut it. Yes, and absolutely. It. If you can ask them even to remove the center bone, that's uh -huh. great too. Yes. Okay. All righty. And then we're going to put So that's just here. water in there. And yep. that's just steamed water. Mm -hmm. Yep. And then there it goes. Now, do you put, uh, what goes in next? 
and then we're gonna put a little bit of rice wine to cut the fish. Mm. Do you need the steamer to be able to really do this effectively? You do. You do. Yeah. yeah. You do. Well, well, there's a, a trick. Fish. Well, right. I, I, you know, a lot of people don't have steamers like <laughs> this. Out. A quick trick that my mom used to do is to put it in the microwave for three minutes. Uh -huh. Really? Oh. Yeah. See, it works. Trick. Not everybody has the fancy, you know. Wow. Situation. <laughs> Okay, so that's the ginger. So it doesn't Stallion. take much. Yeah. And a little bit of soy sauce just to steam it with a little bit of flavor. Mm. And then off we're done. And how long does that take? It's yeah. about seven to ten minutes, depending okay. on the size of your fish. Okay. okay. You know, let's talk about so the next part here. And you always say, even bok choy, like there's so many things that have meaning, but let's try this really quickly. All right, Dylan, you want yours? <laughs> yes, absolutely. Yes. Mm. Enjoy. It's funny you girls were asking how. How we like eating fish at nine o'clock like, like, in the morning. <laughs> I love it. This is this love. is no problem for me. Us too. We oh do God, love so a simple good. breakfast. We usually also at home will sometimes good? have mackerel over oh. rice and it's so delicious. Yeah. Oh, this wow. is fantastic. Nice protein in the morning. Yeah. Yeah. All right, All right so let's talk choy. about bok choy. I don't oh, know about gosh, time. the bok choy. So that's one of our favorites. Mm. Okay. So we want to start off with aromatics like ginger, some garlic, and completely optional if you want some fried shallots that we have over Ooh. here. Okay. And it adds a lot of aroma. It's so it delicious. smells good. Oh, tell me about it. Your oh, home is going to be filled up with mm. delicious smells. You want to saute that a little bit. Okay. And you just want to make sure that garlic does not burn. Right. And so you want to do it for about 30 seconds. We do that at home. And what we're going to do is we're going to grab some whole bok choy. It's this so is, good for you, too. Oh, it's so healthy. Yeah. Talk about nutrition and all the good luck. So we grew up having this for Lunar New Year especially because what it represents is wishing your family long life, oh. longevity. And that's really important okay. because it's filial piety here where we respect our elderly very deeply. Oh, I love that. Yes, and that's an abundance. And, and what's the significance of the fruit flavor? Oh, gosh. So yeah. that's her actual favorite. She I loves her love fruits. fruit flavor. So mm. I'm so happy that the oranges, they look like little nuggets of gold. Uh -huh. So it symbolizes wealth. The dragon fruit, dragon being oh, strength and power. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then you also have the papaya that's also abundant and wealth. Mm. And then the pomelo to symbolize unity and wholeness as a family. Wow. Abundance, well, wealth, prosperity. You. I love yes. it. Happy New Year. Happy, Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Yes. And so thank good. you so much oh, for these recipes, you. which you need to try. Head to yeah. today.com slash food. Our guide this morning, the one and only Padma Lakshmi. We are making the healthiest dish possible. So I'm gonna make a sauce and it's a Balinese baked fish. I first had this dish when I was in Bali okay. over 20 years ago and it's so simple. And the reason I like it is because it's very low effort, okay. you'll see. We love that. It's very healthy, it's very high protein and it's easy to make. Okay. You know, people always ask me how I stay lean. Yes. After, you know, when I do all this eating on Top Chef, it's not easy, but it's eating like this okay. that helps after I finish. So we're gonna start with onions in the blender and to the onions, we're gonna add garlic, ginger, okay. a little bit of tamarind paste. Now tamarind, tamarind paste, paste is wonderful. You can get it at any good supermarket. It'll last in your pantry. It's going to add like a, a, ta a 
tart and sweet tang to it. Okay. Also, I'm adding toasted sesame oil All right. and cumin powder. Cumin powder. And a little salt to taste. That is really it. Okay. And about a, two or three tablespoons of water. Okay. Go ahead. We'll mix that up. You're gonna mix that up. I'm not gonna do it because of sure. the noise. But this is but this what, what it, it looks, looks like. like. And what kind of fish are we using here? We're using red snapper, but honestly, you could use cod, you could use flounder. Any white fish. Any white fish. This is so easy. And, and they're already digging in over there. What's what's the verdict? How is yummy? it? Cod yummy. Got a lot of umami to it. Oh, it's you love the umami. And love then the umami. I'm, all I'm doing is pouring this. That's and it. this is going to go into an oven at 350 degrees for 20 or 25 minutes. And that's all. Foil? And then, no foil. Foil. Okay. Foil. So you cook it covered. Cook it covered. Right. And then when it's done, I know it doesn't look very appetizing, but it's so <laughs> delicious. All you're going to do is take fresh mint, uh -huh. oh, mint. And, and garnish, garnish. Okay. and a little bit of lemon juice. And, and this has literally like less than 250 calories a wow. serving. Wow. Yeah, and you're going to pair it with protein. bok choy? I am. I so. find cooking bok choy intimidating. Why? I, I don't know. It's probably because I'm not a very good <laughs> cook. It's so good. So you want to get bok choy and you just want to quarter it like this. Depending on the size, you can cut it smaller. Okay. And all we're going to do is dump this bok choy and That's blanch it, it literally for 90 seconds. And why okay? do you blanch it? So that it cooks evenly and you don't get weird spots when you're sauteing it. Okay. But you don't want to cook it for that long. Like this is going to cook for literally 90 seconds, two minutes. And then you take it out and you you're immersing it out. the coal. You don't even have to. Oh. I mean, look, if it's a weeknight and the kids are hungry and you okay. got to go, don't worry about immersing it. So you're not in a restaurant. It's, it's got fine. a little kick. So Yummy. this is what it looks like when it's blanched about 90 seconds. I have butter melting here. This is so easy as well. And again, all I'm doing is adding some Asian ingredients to it, which is the toasted sesame oil. What? See a theme emerging. Soy sauce. Well, it's going to go with that fish, right? Onions. Garlic. No onions, sorry. That was garlic. Garlic. That was ginger and a little bit of red chili. There's your bite. It's There's really your bite. Good. Oh, yeah. Yummy. yeah, and then you just saute this up. And I mean, I literally made it in real time. I made this whole meal in real time, except for the 20 minutes that the fish took. Right. That's yeah. how easy it is. Bob Deluxe, yeah. thank you so much as always. Thank Congratulations. You. Hey guys, welcome to The Boost. Today, a celebration of pink power. October is National Breast Cancer Awareness Month, and we're sharing stories of survivors filled with strength, beauty, and hope. We're gonna start with tennis legend Martina Navratilova, opening up about her journey and the power of early detection. Tennis legend Martina Navratilova stunned fans when she announced earlier this year she had been diagnosed with throat cancer and a recurrence of breast cancer at age 66. Couldn't believe that was happening to me. Then I said, okay, what do we do? <laughs> Navratilova is one of the greatest tennis champions of our time with 59 Grand Slam titles. That's the most by any player, man or woman. It's just nice to be a part of the history. You are the Empress of Wimbledon once again. Congratulations. Thank you very much. I'm thrilled that I've proved myself again. She wins! Navratilova dominated the women's singles in the 70s after defecting from her native communist Czechoslovakia in 1975. Why specifically did you choose to leave? Well, there is a lot more freedom here. She was a new challenger for America's sweetheart at the time. She's going to win it just like that. Martina Navratilova has dethroned Chris Everett Lloyd. They had one of the greatest rivalries in sports, going head to head 80 times. Navratilova defeats a legend and becomes one. In 2006, a month shy of her 50th birthday, Navratilova won the U.S. Open Doubles Championship, the oldest player in history to win a major title. Four years later, she faced a diagnosis of a non-invasive form of breast cancer and had a lumpectomy. Initially, when I found out, I, I cried maybe for 10 or 15 seconds, feeling sorry for myself. You get the notice that you need your mammogram. Oh, I'll do it next month. For me, I was four years between breast exams. Thankfully, I caught it early. But then last year, she was diagnosed with stage one throat and breast cancer. Now, speaking out and sharing her story to help other women and facing the diagnosis with the same intensity she brought to her legendary career. So I, I went public with, with my diagnosis to help other women. 
And we are so delighted to have mm -hmm. Martina with us this morning, along with Steve McMillan, the CEO of Hologic. And Steve will mm -hmm. talk to you about why you're part of this story as well. But Martina, I mean, you look fantastic. Thank you. How are you feeling? How are you doing? Well, finally feeling like I can go to the gym. I've really mm -hmm. been uh, physically, it's been really, really rough. Uh, the, the hardest thing I've ever gone through, needless to say. And I almost get P PTSD when I come to New York because my the seven weeks treatment was here. Uh -huh. um, and it was both, I had two cancers at the same time. So it was, uh, yeah, it was, it was, it was very trying. But uh, now, um, Got a haircut, mm -hmm. uh, a bit of thinning uh, going on, but uh, yeah, I feel I feel pretty good. When you, Thankful. I, it could have been so much worse. When when you go through cancer the first time, I know one of the recurring fears is, is it is it ever going to come back? Is it ever going to come back? When you did learn that it was in fact back, although it was many years later, what were the first emotions that you were feeling in that moment? Well, the first one uh, was diagnosed with throat cancer, mm -hmm. and then when they were looking to see exactly where it was, that's when they found the lump mm -hmm. on my breast as well. So I'm like, and I knew it was cancer because that's the only way the, it lit up on the MRI. I'm like, great. So I got double whammy. There were two totally different cancers unrelated to the first one. So I've had now three different cancers and I'm trying to figure out why genetically there's nothing there. So I'm trying to figure out what, am I that lucky or that unlucky? That's, that's, so, you know, lightning strikes, but doesn't strike twice. Well, this one three times. So hopefully it will be a fourth time, but uh, I will, I, I have been very diligent about the screenings mm -hmm. since that first time around 13 years ago. And uh, yeah, and because of that, I, I caught it early, both of them uh, got, it, got it early because I paid attention. So that's why I want to talk about it because I want women to pay attention to their bodies. We take care of everybody else. Yeah. Take care of the animals. You know, when you get the card that the dog needs to get the rabies vaccination, we take them tomorrow. We get the card about breast cancer, uh, mammogram and like, oh, I'll do it, you know, later. And like the first time around was four years in between screening. So I'm very thankful for Hologic and the equipment they have to find it early. So, yeah, I will bring Steve into it because he has a, you have a 3D mammogram, which is really mm -hmm. fascinating. But, you know, Martina, you, you're so tough. Mm -hmm. You are an epic, mm -hmm. epic mm -hmm. champion. Did that help you? Do you think in the way that you mm -hmm. at least even mentally took on this challenge? As a tennis player, you fail all the time. Every every shot, every every point, every other point you lose. So you have to recover. And I think that mentality of coming back and, and believing and staying positive and, and, and uh, you know, uh, surrounding yourself with a good team, uh, that, that was very helpful. And Chris and I, Chris Everett and I went through the same thing essentially uh, emotionally. And we, we, we said, we, we spoke to each other and realized how much that mentality, the champion's mentality that you have to have to be a champion in any sport um, really uh, brought us together and, and, and helped us get through this uh, because you have to stay in the moment. You have to stay in the solution. Mm -hmm. You have to stay positive. What did it mean to have her in your court, so to speak? Because you guys were rivals, obviously, for many, many yeah. years. And there you two were fighting together hand in hand. We've always been there for each yeah. other and emotionally through our, you know, breakups and, and whatever. <laughs> I, I've been to like three marriages ever and two of them were her, her marriages. <laughs> so we, and then she came to mind. You know, yeah. and so we, we've, we've just been so inter intertwined uh, it's amazing how much our paths have, have been on a on a similar path and mm -hmm. this this time around on a bad path but I was there for her when when Chris went through it mm -hmm. and then she was there for me it was amazing the, the it was almost like a twins where when I was really feeling at my lowest there was Chris either a text or a call mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. um, yeah the timing was uh, mm -hmm. yeah the story of your friendship is mm -hmm. so touching mm -hmm. um there's a washington post article mm -hmm. about it people Beautiful. should, no, should check Jenkins it out so yeah. really nailed it's it. incredible yeah, i mean it's I, it'll make you cry mm -hmm. and smile mm -hmm. it's really just so moving i do want to bring you in steve because martina wanted you here for a reason this is mm -hmm. a hologic which and in my right it does a 3d mammogram what is this technology and how can it be more accessible to people yeah the magic is we pioneered and invented the 3d mammography which really gives a complete scan in the old days you would basically look uh -huh. you know one reason the breast is compressed is they're looking at it as, as one page now we can get a holistic view 
and it's really been pioneering and we've gotten reimbursement for it now over the last few years. Again, like many technology advancements, especially for women, sometimes they were a little slower on the well, reimbursement. Say, Martina, this, with yeah. this last and, bout, you had uh, your mammogram mm -hmm. and it didn't catch uh, the breast cancer. It was so small. Uh -huh. yeah. It was so small and athletes, I've been told this, uh, everybody, every athlete, female, yeah. oh, you have dense breasts. Oh, thanks a lot. Uh -huh. <laughs> they're not that big, but they're dense. Uh, but uh, but Hology caught it the first time, didn't catch it the second time. Uh, but, uh, the, you know, nowadays I have to get MRI as well. So I have, holo uh, I have uh, the mammogram now and six <laughs> months from now, uh, MRI, because uh, I have the predisposition for it. But thankfully, it, again, they caught it. They caught it earlier. Well, and the key is getting the screenings, as you yeah. well know, right? Yeah. The, the best thing we can do, we can make the best machines in the world. Right. But if women don't get screened regularly, and let's face it, especially if women, life gets in the way. Mm -hmm. Oftentimes yeah. prioritize. In fact, you went four years without, and you don't, yeah, you, don't you know, one year turns into flies. two into three yeah. without even realizing fine. it. Yeah. And as you know, how to getting it early. Yeah, it makes matters. A Our beloved friend and today lifestyle commerce contributor, Jill Martin Brooks, joined us to share an update on her breast cancer journey, along with a firsthand look at what it's like to work through chemotherapy. This is my story so far. I can't believe this is my movie. Like, I'm still in shock. I'm grieving as I'm healing and as I'm fighting. I was diagnosed with stage two breast cancer. After my mastectomy, they told me that I needed chemotherapy, that it was in my lymph node. Cancer will take whatever you let it. It will take your soul, it'll take your hair, and that might seem small to you, but it's not. Cancer wants everything. It feels like something. It was important story. for me to tell my story in real time because I knew that if I told it at the beginning, people would go get tested. It's a rainy day, but this is the happy part of my day. You want to keep as much of your routine as possible. When I walk into the studio, I feel loved. I feel safe. The Today family is like my family. My Wednesday warrior today. It feels like home to me. Everyone knows what I'm going through, and everyone's amazing. You think I'm gonna let cancer take away something else I love to do? That everybody loves a good deal. Jill steals and deals. When I look in the mirror at the show, I can forget for a second. And I think people are like, oh, you know, your surgery's done. Like, you're good. So I'm numbing the port, and this is just so the needle later doesn't hurt as much. I leave the show, and then I'm back in reality, and I'm fighting for my life. I feel like I am a shell of myself, at least for me. It's not the movie that you picture. It's okay. not throwing up in the bathroom. I sleep all day for five days. Chemo has something called the red devil that I'm getting. That's what they need to fight cancer. Chemo's my friend, fighting against this horrible disease. Today is my fourth chemo treatment. We're done with the red devil. Yay. <laughs> that deserves a high five. Yeah. And Cold capping is a huge one. They freeze the follicles, so it allows you to keep your hair during chemotherapy. For me, my hair has always been something that makes me feel like myself. This part doesn't hurt. It just, it looks scarier than it is. I look in the mirror, my body's like not my body anymore. I just had a mastectomy like six weeks ago, you know? So I'm in physical therapy for that and trying to get my like range of motion back. Breathe out. A year ago, September 10th, I was married. I felt so beautiful that night, and I felt so happy, and I enjoyed every pig in a blanket. <laughs> but I can't help but think, like, I had cancer there. <laughs> and if I had caught it then, would I not have needed all of this? <laughs> My mom said something to me that really resonated. She sends quotes every morning. A strong woman is not the one who doesn't cry. A strong woman is the one who cries and sheds tears. tears for a moment and then gets up and fights again. And that's what you do. Love you. This minute, we're in a fight for my life. I will own forever that I had this and that I fought it and that I beat it, because I'll beat it. Jill. Yes, you are. Uh. Hi, Jill. Hi, honey. Hi. <laughs> you know we want to hug you. The part of your chemo is... It's like you can't go in yeah. public places. I come into work and I'm so careful with you. But, you, you know... Deep breath. Deep breath. Deep One breath. more. Yeah. You don't have to be... Anything. Perfect. No. You don't have yeah. to show the world, oh, it's not... No. It's This is real. This is what's really going yeah. on. Yeah. And I want to use this time properly because mm -hmm. this could have been avoided. 
okay, through genetic testing. And I, again, for people who didn't know, my grandmother, we lost her to breast cancer. My mother is a 25-year breast cancer survivor. Only badass people yeah. get cancer. Yeah. Let me tell you something. You need it to deal with this. And if I had known, it, it's on my father's side. Doesn't run in my father's family. And if I had known, this could have been prevented. And so I could have taken steps. And so that's one main message I want to make sure I get out. And we'll mm -hmm. talk about that. The other main message I want to say is I have had so many, our viewers are just so powerful, is that everyone's either going through this mm -hmm. or has someone going through this. And what I want to say is, the don't be scared to go get that test. Don't mm -hmm. don't not get your mammogram. Don't not don't put it off. The alternative is worth worse. Get the information. Use it for your power. And you take the power into your own hands mm -hmm. so that you can take steps. I just want the information out there. You know what? I think you did that. You have done that. People know. I think what I'm marveling at in this moment is I see you walk in the studio. I see you walk in saying hi to everybody, just like the old Jill, carrying what you're carrying. And I know that you get strength from your family because I know they adore you. But will you explain what that's like to have these two strange worlds that yeah. you're carrying on? It's interesting. We talk about that all the time because like it's I know like what you see. Like I see yeah. myself, too, in the jumpsuit with the yeah. hair. But like yeah. the cold capping works, yeah. you know, but it's not foolproof. Yeah. I've lost about 30 percent, you yeah. know, and so. You know, that's odd for me to look in, my mirror, in the mirror. Um, I have to say it's harder. I'm happy it's me and not my husband and not my parents because I can't imagine watching someone go through this. Mm -hmm. But um, the two are confusing. Mm -hmm. There's a disconnect. Mm -hmm. And so um, the non-treatment weeks, mm -hmm. um, um, I could get my yeah. mojo going. Yeah. I could look at myself and I can come to work. Yeah. But the treatment weeks yeah. are effing hell. Yeah. And anyone who's fighting breast cancer mm -hmm. and you've done it, I mean, it's 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 nothing but. And that's why Dr. Port's here. I want to leave this with hope mm -hmm. and yeah. advancements in the technology so that you can live through chemotherapy and treatment if you need it. Yeah, mm -hmm. sure. Well, first of all, I'm so proud of her. Mm -hmm. And I echo what what Jill said in the sense that um, don't kid yourself. She looks amazing. She pulls it all together, but it is really hard mm -hmm. to go through chemo. Yeah. Um, you know, early detection, early diagnosis yeah. is key and gives you the best chance of survival and also the best chance of survival doing less. There is no one size fits all, yeah. and that's the huge advancement. Yeah. Yeah. Not everyone needs chemotherapy, but when you do, it certainly works. as we celebrate Pink Power. A four-time cancer survivor is now helping other women with their battles while proving the power of a positive outlook. Chanel Jones has her story. Cancer doesn't have to be a period, I always say. It can be a comma. Carla Baptiste is living life with an exclamation point. I feel like if you're too busy living, you're not worried about dying. And you're clearly too busy living. Too busy living. 
It's a mantra she's kept since getting diagnosed with breast cancer 15 years ago, fresh from getting her MBA in Paris. I felt a rash on my left breast, which I thought was weird. So I went to the restroom and applied some cortisone cream and I felt a large mass. Carla didn't have a history of breast cancer in her family, but she trusted her gut and immediately got an ultrasound and mammogram. What they thought it was was invasive ductal carcinoma stage two, but it was actually invasive ductal carcinoma stage 3A. The tumor was larger than they thought, and it was in 14 out of 24 of my lymph nodes. She went through 16 weeks of chemotherapy, six weeks of daily radiation and tamoxifen, all while keeping a positive outlook. I dug in my heels and I decided I'm gonna refuse to give in. If cancer wants to bring me into this pit and toss me to and fro, I'm not gonna let it happen. Carla had a mastectomy on her left breast and was cancer free for seven years until she started having back spasms, low blood pressure and shortness of breath. The cancer had moved to her spine, stage four. I was so frustrated because I kept saying something's not right. And I was just given this, no, you're fine. You know, you're just working out too hard. So your gut Got instinct was right. Yes. Twice. Yes. Always trust your instincts, always. Those instincts and regular self exams helped her to catch the cancer when it came back for a third and fourth time. I'm on pills and hormone therapy basically again, and I'm cancer free again. Well, amen to that. Amen to that. Let it stay that way. Complications with her latest treatment left her unable to walk, but in true Carla fashion, she's learning to walk again with a smile. Bending my leg a little better than before. Today, at 49 years old, Carla is now on a mission to advocate for early cancer screenings and regular checkups, sharing her story through her memoir, Dig In Your Heels, and serving as the vice president of the Dallas chapter of the Sisters Network, a nonprofit run by black breast cancer survivors. Black women are diagnosed at a younger age and a later stage than other races of women. And we die more often than other races of women as well. So I just wanted to show like, life does go on. We are getting this show on the road. We're paying for mammograms for people who are underinsured and uninsured. And we are out there making sure that people have support. Where does your strength come from? When you've been through as much as I've been through, you kind of learn to just have faith. And wow, a mother's love. She's been with me through thick and thin. It's like, I can't keep her away. For a woman who's faced the worst and come out triumphant, Carla is not finished living. I have a motto, one life to live, many lives to touch. I just want to keep touching lives.
Welcome back to The Boost. Hearing the words, you have cancer, changes your life in so many ways. When you're going through the doctor's appointments and treatments, sometimes you need just a day to step back and forget about everything. Well, one nonprofit is helping patients do just that. And along with their help, our Donna Farrison gave one very special person a very special surprise. Take a look. Kate Hawkford is living with stage four metastatic breast cancer. But instead of focusing all of her energy on the pain, she's helping other cancer patients find a little bit of joy. I was sitting in my oncologist's office and this woman sat next to me. She ultimately shared with me that she was struggling with her cancer care. My husband and I decided to send her a gift card uh, to a local restaurant so that she could take her family out and just kind of take a, a little bit of time away from what was going on in her life. And that's how it all began. Kate started a nonprofit called Night Out For You. I hope that I have more empathy and sympathy for others. As I go through this journey, I realize that everybody else has their own journey and that we should all probably care for one another a little bit more. When you are sick, you are typically told what you have to do and you have to keep a stiff upper lip. Here, what we do is we give you an experience that you tell us what you wanna do and all we ask is for you to show up. Night Out For You grants wishes to adult cancer patients, giving them a fun experience, all expenses paid. It is 100% volunteer and donation based, and most of their volunteers are former recipients. I was really feeling down. I was tired. They had sent my daughter and I to the day spa. It was a wonderful day. I didn't think about my problems with cancer. After that, I decided that what they're doing is amazing, and I wanted to be a part of it. From sporting events, dinner parties, and shows, the goal is to give a little bit of an escape for the cancer patient and their loved ones. We're just giving you a shot in the arm of a little bit of love, a little bit of joy, and a little bit of a step back, take a breather. Next on their wish list is Allison Dolan, a 44-year-old breast cancer survivor. Cancer is always on my mind. I'm always thinking about it. For the rest of my life, I'm gonna have to worry and get screening done. It was Allison's nurses who thought she could use a little break. They reached out to Night Out For You, her wish to come visit our show. Hoda and Jenna, I'm telling you, they got me through a lot. They really did. Those two are the most positive forces. And they, even days when I just laid in bed, I had to have the Today Show on. Days that I was going for my treatment, I had to have the Today Show on. They're just so lively and just full of energy and full of positiveness. And it inspires me to go out and be a better person and, and bring the sparkle out and really, really do good in this life. Night Out For You is sending Allison to the Today Show. Hoda and Jenna were her inspiration. After spending some time on the plaza, Allison got her true wish. Is there an Dolan here? <laughs> Hi, Allison, how are you? What do you say we head in? Okay, give you a little bit VIP treatment yes. at the studio. Oh my gosh, yes. And then you meet Hoda and Jenna oh. live yes. on the show. Yes. yes. I don't know if y'all are ready for this. Uh, I'm ready. Are you guys ready? <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. Listen already. Come on out! <laughs> oh, hi, Allison. Hi, Allison. <laughs> oh, we're happy you're here. Oh, oh my God, we love you. No. So hi, Allison. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Come sit. Oh, join absolutely. us. Absolutely. I'm so excited. Oh. <laughs> And your oh, story sorry. is so beautiful. Oh. What a journey it has been. How are you feeling, by the way? I feel amazing. Yeah. I just had a treatment yesterday, yeah. um, and it was like a whirlwind. My nurses were like, we got to get you out of here. <laughs> um, I feel amazing. I feel amazing. And you're, you're, you're still getting treatment, but you're yep. cancer-free? I am cancer-free. Yes, oh. yes, and yes. So how did 
you get, a lot of people go through that. How did you get through the days? What was it that got you through? It was hard. You, yeah. you, this whole, you too, you too yeah. really got me through. You really did. You're, you oh. just bring the joy <laughs> and the energy and it's just amazing. Oh, <laughs> we're crying <laughs> out. The whole Today Show family, you, you're all my friends. Mm. My, I get to finally meet my friends. Oh. I can't believe this. Oh, Donna wow. too. <laughs> Everybody, it's just amazing. I mean, I manifested this. You I really did. did. And I know you talk yeah. about manifesting. You <laughs> do. And I listen to your podcast and you talk about manifesting <laughs> Oprah and <laughs> Michelle Obama, who I absolutely love too. Um, and I just, I, I just can't believe this. I'm uh. pinching myself. Is this me? Uh, and yeah. Really me? And by the way, she said she wanted to be a Today Show host. And I think she is today. Yeah, I was going to say, you totally and said. Boost, we've got one more video that's sure to leave you with a smile. Take a look. Two best friends who hadn't seen each other in a while because one of them moved to a new school. But watch what happens when the two moms planned a surprise play date for them to reunite. When Zane and Zion saw each other, they ran in for the big hug. It lasted all day, just about four years old. They've known each other since they were one. They used to give each other big goodbye hugs, so they're making up for lost time. That is it for us for today. We hope the stories of these incredible survivors were able to start your day off with a little positivity and a little hope. We'll see you right here next time on The Boost on Today All Day. Hey there, welcome to Start Today. We're stepping into a new season and it's the perfect time to turn over a new leaf. Whether you're, you're setting a new fitness goal for the fall or starting a workout routine for the first time, there's a place for everybody in our Start Today community. We've got over a half million members and it's never too late to join. Just scan the QR code to subscribe to our newsletter and connect with other folks on a mission to get healthy. On this episode, our Chanel Jones takes us inside her training for the New York City Marathon. Plus, today contributor Allie Love revealing her secrets for boosting confidence. And later, we have some simple workouts, including one you can do right from your couch. This is Start Today. First, let's kick things off with our fitness leader, Stephanie Monsoor, and two community members. Okay, so I want you to meet Nancy Stover McCarthy of New Jersey. Fun fact, she just told me her late mom, Dorothy, used to work here as an executive assistant here at the Today Show. Is that not crazy? That is so crazy. Thank you guys for this full circle moment. Well, how beautiful it's is beautiful. that? beautiful. I love that. Okay, and by the way, I should tell people at home, I'm going to brag on you. You consistently surpassed 10 thousand steps every single Give it up for Nancy. Day. Come on. Yes. Proud of you. Thank you for joining our little club. So do you have a question for Stephanie? Yes, I do. Okay. So I've walked a 5K before, mm -hmm. but now I want to walk and run a 5K. Good. Yes, I'm proud of you. Yes. Okay. 
So right. how do I prepare my body for the running part? Yes, so we're gonna step it up here and part of our training plan includes stretch and strength. So I'm gonna have you hold onto this chair here for balance, Nancy. So anyone at home that needs a modification, go ahead. We're gonna do some forward leg swings. Now, this is loosening oh. up the hip flexors, which get really, really tight when you're walking or running a lot. So I wanna make sure that you're incorporating- to do this. Yeah, you do, I know. heels. <laughs> Good job, Chanel. I wanna make sure that you're really loosening things up, but then for strength, we're gonna hold it here in front. Squeeze that quad, good. Strengthen the quad for five seconds, and then reach it to the back. Strengthen the glutes and the hamstrings. This is gonna help with running, that motion. We need to build the quads, we need to build the glutes, the hamstrings, so that we can move forward faster and with more power, but we also gotta stretch things it's out. It's a good active good? stretch. Mm -hmm. Very good, yes. this is yeah. great. Feel it. Well, let's tell yes. everybody about Joe. Joe Marrow, Marrow? Marrow. Marrow, yes. Joe Marrow of Long Island, New York. I want to make sure I got this right. You lost 130 pounds yes. in three yes. years? All naturally. Give it up for Joe, guys. Yes. Come on. Thank you. Thank you. And is it true that all by walking, you kept it off by walking? So cardio is, was very important for my weight loss. Um, without walking about nine to 10,000 steps a day, I wouldn't have achieved my weight loss Good goals. For you. Man, I'm so happy yes. for you. Thank you very Dude, much. That's so yes, great. Thank you. You got some for Steph? Yes. So last year, I ran my first 5K at my alma mater's homecoming, FGCU, Florida Gulf Coast University. Oh, yes, I went to high school in Naples. Oh, I know wow, FGCU. that's yeah. wonderful. <laughs> I'm planning on running my second 5K next month. Yes. Do you have any suggestions or tips for me uh, for my next 5K? Yeah, you know, especially in the heat down in Florida, it is hard to, yes. you know, keep up your stamina. But one thing people forget is to stretch those inner okay. thighs. Okay. So what we're going to do is open the feet wider than the shoulders. Nice. And then go ahead and bend to one side, keeping the other leg straight. Do you feel that stretch in the inner thigh of yes. the stationary leg? Yes. Good. good. And then yes. we're going to come good. back through center and over the other side. And Jacob, props yeah. to you. This is dynamic stretching. We're stretching. Stretching in motion here Somebody to warm up. <laughs> and then we're gonna hold this stretch here and turn this into a strength move. So again, strengthening the quad, the glute, but still feeling that stretch, coming through center and going to the other side and holding this strength pose for five seconds. And then alternating. That's gonna help you be more loose and limber so yes. that you can run maybe faster even, break a personal Great. record, and feel better afterwards. Less recovery time when you it. do the stretching. If they can do it, you can do it at home too. Thank you, Steph. Amen. Yes. Thank you guys. Thank you guys. Yes, of course, Joe. Yes. Great job. Coming up, Chanel's giving us an inside look at what it's like to train for the New York City Marathon. Then later, Allie Love sharing tips for bossing up and boosting confidence. We'll be right back. We're back. Over the past couple of months, you may have heard our very own Chanel Jones is going to be running the New York City Marathon. Here's a look at her journey so far and the huge strides she's been making in her training. Running around is a mainstay of my day. At work, at home, and even more with my kids. Running as a sport, though, 
That's new territory. I did not like gym class as a kid. I hated the monkey bars. I hated field day, all of that stuff. But I love a challenge, and this one's a biggie. And I'm saying, okay, you know what, Chanel, you didn't like it because it was hard. So now you need to take your 45-year-old self and do something that is really challenging. The New York City Marathon, all 26 miles, something I never imagined I'd attempt, even in my wildest dreams. So when I first started doing this, I just thought I would go outside and practice sometimes. I never really thought about really what it takes to prepare for a marathon. For help, I enlisted Nike running coach Jess Woods, who's done 18 ultra marathons. Jess has been a godsend, so she'll send me a schedule for the week. What I've learned is running isn't always just running. Some days you may just run for 30 minutes, other days you'll run for a longer amount of time. But the goal is to get to 26 miles. Jess introduced me to the concept of prehab, an assessment to help improve your form and get ahead of any potential injury. There are no tubes, there are no cords. It's all cameras. And using those cameras and syncing them with the treadmill, they're able to analyze your gait, how you're running, where you're putting your weight, your posture. And you're graded on your performance. And I got a C the first time. I don't get C's. I had to lean forward a little more. I had to improve my cadence. Just tweaking a few of those things, running a little bit more forward, got me from a C to a B. Initially, five miles seemed like crazy town. So now, when I'm aiming for 12 on the weekend, five doesn't seem so bad. To get those endorphins flowing, Jess and I always start. Oh. Yeah? Yes, with a warm up. Quick, pop, pop. This is nice that we're at a track today. Yeah. Because we're usually just trying to find a quiet space on the plaza. Exactly. Today's goal speed work so that my marathon pace stays consistent. This is going to be faster than your marathon pace now. Okay. We want you to get tired. Okay. Because then you're going to try and find that marathon pace again after on tired legs. Ooh, okay. All right. Doing it. So it feels hard, but not impossible. Right. Okay. Yes. And 203 for that lap. Seriously, who am I? Like, who am I right now? Ultimately, it's about a lot more than just running. A lot of us have things that we've always wanted to do, and life gets in the way. So I am hoping that if I do this, that it will maybe trigger something in you to maybe do something as well. Um, because I think together we can do hard things. All right, let's do it. And while I still have two more months and many, many miles ahead of me, I'm grateful for how far I've come. Three, two, woo! Perfect! Get nice there. job! Woo <laughs> Marathon pace after some hard intervals. Progress. Yeah, that's more than a little bit of progress. Oh that was awesome. Goodness. Nicely done. Yay. Thank woo. you. And like Chanel, finding the right mindset is really important when tackling a big challenge or even in our daily lives. Today, contributor Allie Love has just what we need to feel empowered and confident. I love this conversation because who hasn't been in a moment where you don't feel your most confident self? Absolutely. Sure, right? And we need a few things, a few tools in our toolbox to pull from so we can boost our confidence, whether it's a morning, a night, or a day. Sure. Agenda. When you say boss up, what do you mean? Oh, boss up, meaning set the standard, establish the tone, right? Okay. So set the standard means like there's no point in following the rules when you can solve real problems for real people by mm -hmm. listening and staying curious. And then establish a tone means any room or Zoom you walk in, you can affect people's energy negatively or positively. Ooh, you all like know that. this. Okay. That's true. So you, you have to own that. That's that power. True. We agree. One of the things that comes up first is the way you look. So Riley here, who looks very familiar, Hi, can y'all tell? Savannah Sellers, little Um, Riley's rocking a look that I think is confident. Today I wore my afro. Many of us, when we're trying to be our most confident selves, we have one or two looks that boost that inter mm -hmm. internal confidence. She has a slick back pony, a red lip, and a cat eye. So keep it simple, keep it fierce, keep it focused, baby. You look great. <laughs> you look great. Wow. Fantastic. You know, it's, it's funny you say that because sometimes when I feel like I need a book. 
like I'll wear my three piece as opposed to mm. you know a sport coat because I feel like that kind of brings how you, you up. feel. Yeah. Yes, okay. of course. Right. Sometimes how you look on the outside will affect how you feel on the inside. Yes. Let's talk about some confidence boosting content, and and we'll get to the music and what you what people listen to in just a moment. But you maintain this book changed your life. I love wow. this book, Radical Candor, Kim Scott. I think the read is a necessity. The reason for it, it really informs you how to handle yourself in your professional setting, personally and professionally, and then how to carry that with you throughout the day. Sometimes we feel less confident when we're in a meeting or when we're, our, when we're around our coworkers. Mm -hmm. And so it's like how to speak up, yeah. how to stay focused in those moments, and truly be yourself. And I think this book really, you know, gives you the tools for that. So I love it. I've read it a couple times. What about what we're listening to? Uh, a boss playlist. I mean, why not? <laughs> we're going to boss up. It's this called is, a boss playlist. It is oh, called a boss, the boss yes. playlist. Is this oh, yours? Yes, I made this playlist oh, this specific, specifically for all of you. Yeah, it's um, on screen. Yes, this is all our women empowerment music. This you can like do it for, for your walking in the morning, Al. Hot mm -hmm. girl walk, Craig. I know you love a hot girl walk. I do. I do. <laughs> Craig does <laughs> a hot girl walk. On the tread, on the but ah. this this is music that really reminds you of who you are, and playlist. I love it. Yes. So you Janet put Jackson in boss too. playlist on Spotify. Yes, on Spotify. Oh, yeah. Lauren Hill. Yeah, I this is it. a great playlist. You know, okay. I remember in the '70s there would be these posters on walls like a cat on a on a limb hang in there. <laughs> uh, but you, you've got a more modern version of this. I do. I think what you feed yourself internally is so important. We talk about this all the time. And so these are some of my favorite quotes. If not now, like if not you win. If not now win. And I think it's like, it's a reminder that you are important and, mm -hmm. and that you are here and you can do this. Um, another thing that I always say, work the quirk. This is a little quirky, so don't judge me, folks. Okay. It's called, what do you call it? Work the quirk. Work the quirk. Work the quirk. Okay. Anytime you need a confidence booster, look at photos of yourself, photos of you and your friends. It reminds you of who you are in the public eye. Like, Ooh. how do you, how does the world see you? And so it sounds weird to look at yourself, but go through your no. photos That's and look at yourself. I've got a in your ton of our, yes. of our yeah. pictures. And you do too. Yes. I, in fact, I have a. If you go in my dressing room right now, yes. Al Roker's picture is. There you go. Door. I mean, who, who doesn't want to be? That reminds you of what Al. you don't want to be. <laughs> no. And you know what? I will say this: this little what you, um, you know, the quotes Same. and stuff like that. I grew up with them all over the house. My yeah. mama put them in the bathroom, so yeah. I feel like it was good for her. But it was good for me as a yes. teenager too to see these things when you're I left feeding the house. yourself. You're absorbing it. Yes. Mm -hmm. And my last thing, which is really, really important, uh -huh. is when you need a confidence booster, okay. text your friends and have them remind you of who you are. Oh. So I've texted my friends Emma Lovewell or Sierra and just say like, I need a, I need a moment. Can you just help me? Like I'm like, hey hype moment come through for me sis oh. and she does and these are just like they'll send me a text message that's a great idea a hype moment. And, and i have a, a little uh surprise for oh. all three of you okay. okay okay all right so al you're up first now okay. you're good at reading the teleprompter i saw you on your live this morning um so let's go ahead and read can you see that we're gonna oh, roll wow. this teleprompter oh. al who is this from al? that's from jim gaffigan it's oh. this age of anger ego and artificial intelligence you're an unsung hero everyone has struggles and heartbreak but you seem to embrace every moment oh. so with authentic oh. kindness the world needs more Al Rokers, please don't end up being a serial killer because that would make me look stupid. <laughs> I got bad news for you, Jim. <laughs> but thank you. That's awfully so nice. Wow. He's such not, a lovely not just Al Craig. Take a look. Well, my, whose text am I reading? Oh, this is my oh, younger yes. brother. That's beautiful. Read it. Go ahead. Go oh, ahead. hey, man. God broke the mold when he made you. Your understanding and compassion for others is something most don't know. Wow. Uh, I love to watch you when you work because your love and passion for your craft is absolutely remarkable. If we were in person, we would raise a glass of bourbon. But here's to you, my friend. Continue to knock it out of the park, bro. Oh, that's wow. Does that make that's you feel lovely. good? Almost made me cry. Yes, wow. yes. Okay, here you go. Oh, Jeez. That, is, that is so sweet, Alan. And Chanel, of course, for you. Oh, oh Dylan. Dylan. Oh, that's so sweet. Dear Chanel, your laugh brings me so much joy, and your zest for life is infectious. Thank you for knowing me so well. Aww. Our friendship is truly special. Oh, yes. That's texting, a great idea. Yes, you, texting Allie. your friends and family to remind you of who you are is the biggest confident booster. So I hope some of these tips, again, in your toolkit, you can pull from yeah. at various moments in your lives. And you can be there for others. Thank that's you. Just, that was great. What a great idea. Thank you, Allie. Up next, we're going to show you some low-intensity exercises to help your body recover after a workout. Plus, some simple moves you can do while lying down. Just lay down, because we'll be right back after these messages.
and welcome back. Like most things, exercise is all about balance. Sometimes it can be tempting to skip rest days, especially when you're making progress and you want that momentum to keep going. Well, Nike master trainer Joe Holder recently walked us through some low intensity workouts to help make the most out of your rest days. So okay. We're going to talk about active recovery. Okay. Uh, I'm training for a marathon right now. It's amazing. You Just like Chanel. I know. Yeah. There's a trick here in active recovery. We often use lower intensity workouts to help us feel better. Yeah. But you can also use this in daily life. Okay. okay. Low intensity workouts, three times a week, 20 minutes. Uh -huh. Both increase energy and reduce fatigue, people say. Oh, okay. So we're okay. going to start okay. with jump rope. Okay. And this is what we're going to do show you some different ones. Let's jump rope. All Come right. On. When's the last time we let's jumped rope? Jump rope, Chanel? Yeah, let's go. Um, like when I was in fifth grade. So this is an easy oh, well, one for you. <laughs> nice and simple. Look so I'm doing it instead. So you would jump rope, uh -huh. and you would put it down. And how then long you give will you me do a that body for? weight exercise. So you okay. go one minute jump rope. So play like I did one that. One minute right, body fine. weight. Uh -huh. Yep. And it's nice and easy. You do that for 10 rounds, low intensity. You should you do that. Doing that so very I should rapidly. be able to talk for it. Yes. Yeah, but I could talk. My heart rate is good. Well, well yeah, that's because you're good. <laughs> Another one we got is foam roll. Now okay. you come with me. All right. So we're going to sit here. Easy way. Okay. So again, remember, a lot of people to sit here, complain of sore muscles or fatigue. Right. That's why they don't improve their health. Okay. But this is a super simple one to be able to do that. Siri's interested in Siri's what you're saying. Siri's interested. Yes. Yep. So we roll there. Okay. Nice and quick. Maybe get the hamstring. Good. You make it look so easy. Your, you, your limbs are so much longer than mine. Let me stand up. Okay. And this is what we got. So after you do that, then yes. you just give me a nice dynamic exercise. So hug the knee to the okay. chest. So we go one muscle group on the foam roll one minute. So Joe, is, is there a way to, to modify that if you've got like knee problems? Yeah, this one, knee uh -huh. there, and nice and easy. All you have to do, maybe just move across the body. Uh -huh. We're just working ranges of motion. So well, I'll, I got this something for you. Good. It feels good? Yeah. One team, like one dream. Right. I got one something team, for you. One All right. dream. Okay. We call this weighted aerobics. Okay. So nice and easy. You could just find some weight. Uh -huh. You could maybe give me a curl, All right? right let's you go. give me a lateral raise. Oh, Come okay. On. Give me that Long curl. limbs. There we go. That's there you lateral go. He's got raise. a wingspan. Yeah. <laughs> maybe the push press. Okay. Good. Oh. And then okay. we just cycle through exercises. Yep. Uh -huh. For about 45 seconds. Mm -hmm. Take 15 seconds off. Repeat that. 10 or so rounds. And and yeah. even if you can't do heavy or heavier weights, like canned can goods, yep. things like that? Exactly, because remember what we said, low intensity. Low intensity. And guess what improved energy better, uh, low intensity than actually medium? Really? So, yes. All right. Active okay. recovery. So if you do that real quick, then boom, 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 boom. that's all you go. need. So that's my, fa my right. takeaway, one team, one dream. One team, one dream. <laughs> right. Just ahead, we've got two more workouts for you, including exercises, I love this, you can do from your couch. We'll be right back. We're back with more Start Today workouts. First up, Peloton instructor Tunde Oyunane stopping by the third hour to share some simple ways to tone arms and core. 
First of all, congratulations. Thank you so much. And tell me what it means. First of all, that's next level. That's um, but for all of you guys to be highlighted in a group of women who are changing how we think about fitness. It's not just leg warmers and doing grapevines. You know, nothing yeah. wrong with that. But you guys are so forward thinking. Well, it's incredible to be here. Last time I was here, I was celebrating the launch of my book, Speak. And now to be one of six incredible women featured as the forces of fitness for amazing. women's health. It feels pretty surreal. I was picked on and teased for the way that I looked as a kid. And this shoot was for younger Tunde to be mm. celebrated in my body mm. for my flaws and all. It, all, and all, it is for every single person who has never felt comfortable in their own skin. Oh, I love really that. incredible. Love well it. Said. I know. All right, so you're going to show us uh, by jumping right into this workout. We've got some yeah. fans, NBC staffers. Uh, so let's just get to it. All right, so this is a quick 10 minute workout that you can do at your home for arms and core. All you need is music and some dumbbells. We're going to start. Right, okay. You're going to grab your weight. We're going to start with our arms and then we'll finish this workout on the floor. We're going to go from into some bicep curls to hammer curls. So in a bicep curl, your palms are facing up towards your shoulder and then you're going to come back up and flip your grip so that your palms rotate and face inward on the way in. So this is a really great way to maximize on time, targeting both heads of your biceps. You're doing great. Oh, thank you. And in a I'm, suit. I'm, I'm wildly impressed. Yeah. Does it matter how heavy they are? So I would recommend anything from about 5 to 20 pounds. We're working with a little lighter dumbbells today. I don't want to break too much of the sweat in our, our beautiful attire, but I, <laughs> I'd recommend about 10 to 20 12 okay. um, of the bicep to hammer curl. From there, we're gonna go into an overhead extension. This is gonna target oh, that's the gonna... back. This, Yeah, now you feel it. Ooh. This is gonna target the back of your arms. So make sure to keep your elbows rotated in, almost framing your hairline, wonderful. And Tinder, how far do you go back when you do this? I'll try this at home sometimes and try to figure out like what's the right point? You're killing, I would say you wanna keep your hips tucked. You so it, once I you start it. to I notice that your hips are flaring, maybe you're going back a little bit too far. I should start working out of my dress I know, room. This I feel is a good Strategy. Right? You start to feel yeah. it quickly, right? Yeah. Even the light dumbbells will attack you too. Yeah. So same thing here about 10 to 12 uh, before you move on to our final arm movement, which is an L raise. So this is going to target your shoulder, specifically the front and sides of your shoulders at the same exact time. Yeah. Core so stay strong, I hip know. stay yeah. tucked. You know nice, what? Right? It's Staggering. one of those things where we have no excuse because you can do this at home. You can you know do it I mean? at home. You yeah. can do it at the airport. You can yeah. do it while you're waiting for your laundry to, to dry. I say create a playlist, three to four songs. And again, you can bang this out really quickly in a matter of 10 minutes. So we're going to put our dumbbells down. So those, those first three movements, 10 to 12 reps three times through. Okay. We're going to finish out with some core. Now, uh, advanced version, you can hold on to a dumbbell. Feet are planted on the ground. We're going into a Russian twist. We're gonna twist from right to left. So from side to side. Now, Ooh. if you're like my guy Peter, who is on his Peloton just about every single day, uh, so, this is easy well. for him. And so Peter and I, we're gonna pick our heels up off the ground. Was this a progression to this see movement. If I could do this. Very nice. Ooh, yes. Working from side to side. You know who's appreciating you saying that? My wife, who knows that is not. <laughs> who knows that is not true. You gotta wear the the badge, right? The Peloton badge. Girl, on. how long are we supposed to so do So we're this? here for 30 seconds. We're gonna fast forward. This is like I'm a sure. yeah. This is a fake 30 right. seconds. You're gonna set your dumbbells down. We're gonna go to, into our last and final movement, a hollow hold. So back is completely flat on the mat. It's so flat that even an ant couldn't crawl mm. underneath you. So we're gonna pick our left foot up. Nice. You can tuck your hands underneath your booty. Mm -hmm. Right heels come off the mat. Head, neck, and shoulders lift off the mat. The higher your feet, the easier this will be. Oh. The lower your heel to the <laughs> ground, the more challenging this that will was be. Just and that we're gonna hold this. We're gonna light our Woo! campfire. We're gonna okay. hold this for 30 How seconds. How you doing, Sarkay? Walk up, thank you. So we have a, we have a like commercial. <laughs> This I want one of those milkshakes. No one was. Why was I offered the milkshake? The milkshake sitting there. For three, good. for two, and one. Sit it up, everybody. Great job. I think I'm stuck. How do you feel? I actually feel really good. <laughs> That's just right? good. It's like I we did that. Something. I Hopefully know. you did it with us as well. Thank I you so it, much. I hope we got this another milkshake. Our workout Woo. partners, thank you guys so much. Thank you guys. And if you're feeling a little extra lazy, we've got a workout you can do from the comfort of your couch. Here to show us how it's done, trainer Vicki Justice. The point of this workout is that it can be done by anyone, anywhere, anytime. All it's right. a few minutes long and it makes you feel just so good in okay. just a few minutes. What's I love the first it. workout? So, the first exercise. I'm we like, are gonna... I want to do whatever you're doing. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Well, She's not like working out on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> so, Vicky, you were saying, what, what's, what's the first one? We got to lay on our side. Okay. <laughs> yes. 
So, for the first exercise. <laughs> like, I'm following her around everywhere. Like, whatever well, she does. you let her go. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> laughing is also good for your abs. Thank That's you. true. Okay. <laughs> so, for the first laughing? exercise, Al, you want to be careful with your head. Okay. We are going to do side leg raises. So, okay. staying with your core tight, you're going to raise your leg up just a bit, not too high, okay. come back down. So this works your glute medius, which is the upper outer part of your booty, and your Good TFL. Well, this is so medius. This is, and really and truly, if we're watching something on TV, mm -hmm. you yes. can almost just do this while Absolutely. it passes the time. Okay. Exactly. How many times should we do this? Like 12 to 20 reps. It just depends on your own fitness level, uh -huh. but you don't have to go too high. <laughs> okay. What's another lower body one? Uh, another lower body one is a clamshell. So you want to put your legs together like okay. this. Mm -hmm. Keeping your heels together, you're gonna open your knee up like this, back down. You should feel this one in your glute maximus. Some producers gonna lose their job over this thing. This is abs. Okay. Well, this oh, one some is producer great. didn't make you wear one size too small. <laughs> to the upper body. How about we okay. move on to the upper body? <laughs> okay, upper body, we're gonna be seated so we can, okay. you know, you guys can come up on the couch. Oh, okay. Everybody up. <laughs> such a we job. can be more mature about this. Okay, okay. thank you. <laughs> Sorry, Miss Vicky. Vicky. Sorry, Vicky. Okay. So, we're gonna start off with robot arms. So you're gonna put your arms up like this. Make sure your elbows are in line with your shoulders. Okay. And all you're gonna do is bring move. your arms like this and up. <laughs> Very easy. <laughs> Kind of like you. those cats you see in the Chinese restaurant. Oh, yes. <laughs> it has a new name. <laughs> exactly. But this is great for your shoulders, for your mobility, Look for your upper sorry. body. And honestly, I feel it. And how, how many times do you do this one? Same thing, like 15 to 20 times. Okay. And this is great because you can do this at your desk when yeah. you're at work. Just, I mean, your coworkers might be like. And how okay. about a good, a good core exercise? Core exercise. We're going to do some lean back marches. You oh, want to lean back lean just back. a little bit okay. until you feel your abs engage. Okay. You're gonna bring one knee up and switch. This is good. And again, yeah. if you're watching, let's say a 30 minute show, you can get all of these Exactly, in. and these yeah. are so easy Actually, that you don't really have to abs. think okay. about them that much. You yeah. Honestly, if you're show. watching TV a couple times a week or whatever you're doing and you could do this and get this in, Vicky, it's not bad. You. And I wanna apologize formally for my friend Al. <laughs> <It's okay. laughs> And that's all for this episode of Start Today. Don't forget, scan the QR code to sign up for our newsletter. Thanks for watching, and we will see you next time on Today All Day. Over the years, I have been lucky enough to step into the Today Show kitchen and watch the best chefs from around the world teach us some incredible recipes. And we had made that pesto, which was, oh, exactly. darn. Like, you know, I almost got that, out of this one clean. Good. Turn it down. Oh, my God. I had one job. None of which I've mastered because, well, I didn't know the first thing about how to cook. But those days are behind me for good. And I'm starting to find a little confidence in the kitchen. Now, culinary superstar Bobby Flay sharing his love of seafood from coast to coast. Today we're gonna to be making crab cakes with an orange chive tartar sauce, and then try a West Coast inspired crispy fried fish taco with a mango black bean salsa. I love tacos. I have a lot to learn about seafood and I cannot wait to give this a shot. So let's get started. Bobby Flay. Bobby Flay? It's really Bobby Flay? It's really Bobby Flay. I mean, we have a long history together. Yes, we do. We've, we, we've made lots of food on the Today Show together. We have, and you've even been called in to try to teach me to cook a long time ago. Yes, and we're, we're back. We're back. <laughs> okay, guess what? It didn't stick, but now it is. I'm learning a few things. So I've been brought in to teach you, um, you know, a couple of things. Seafood, but also frying seafood. Okay, so what, what, what's our plan today? So the, so the plan today is, first we're going to shape the crab cakes make the tartar sauce, fry the crab cakes, make the mango black bean salsa, prepare the batter and fry the fish, plate and serve. We're gonna start by cutting a shallot. My instinct would be to cut off these edges. Yes, exactly, cut okay. off the edges. And then exactly. I know, I've learned that you should, when you have a round thing, you need to give yourself a flat edge. Yeah, so cut it in half. We're gonna make cuts in, in two different directions. First, oh. we're gonna go like this. Are we mincing? We're gonna, yeah, we're gonna make them very fine. Okay because this is actually gonna be in the crab cake and we're not gonna take it out. So we want it oh, to be- Good um, little bite size. To, exactly right. 
The one thing I always tell people when, they're, when, they're, when they have a knife in their hand, don't daydream. Just think about exactly what you're doing at the very moment. Why would I daydream when being with you is a dream? Oh my goodness. Okay. Ding. Crab cake is over. Okay, I know. <laughs> I, so I did that and now I may just chop chop. Nope, nope. Oh. And then you're gonna and then you're gonna take your, your hand. Oh and, right. Do you remember this? This kind of this thing, right? Hold yeah, it together. Exactly. I hate this. You hate <laughs> I hit too hard. And I had to hold it like this because otherwise it's splayed yes, out. That's ex that's okay, exactly. And you and that and that's how you're gonna create a like a, a fine little, dice. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. This is so unnatural. It is. You but look, look, at look, my look how beautiful. Seat. It's gorgeous. Cute. Now, so if, if you know, a couple of months ago, if somebody handed you a shallot, do you think you could get it diced like no, that? No, definitely yeah, not. Yeah, exactly. So we're gonna put our shallots in here. Okay. So neutral oil, like canola or something, or vegetable? Canola oil, vegetable oil. You know okay. what I've been using a lot of avocado oil. Whose big bit is this? I think that's mine. It's definitely yours, Bobby. I'll it's take not credit mine. for it. Okay. Okay. There's two different um, ways to sauté. Uh, so, like in this case, we're sautéing the shallots. Yeah. With color, it's sautéing, and sweating it is cooking it without color. Okay. So what we what we want to do is sweat this. Okay. So we're 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 softening the shallots. Mm -hmm. We're bringing out all the natural flavors. You can smell how delicious it that smells so good. Because. Dumb question alert. How do I know it's soft if I can't touch it? It's too hot. Well, you're, you're feeling it with your. Yeah. Um, you can also you can also taste it. Oh yeah, they're big on tasting. <laughs> they're big. Really opens up the pores. It still tastes hard to me. Okay, so then keep sauteing that. Okay. And they're starting to get a little color, so let's be careful. Okay. All right, I think that's fine. Okay, cool. I'm turning it off. Great. All right, so we're going to put this into our bowl. Oh, we forgot to have a toast. Oh my goodness. Bobby! We're drinking already. I know, that's how we do on this show. Ginger beer margaritas. Okay. Mmm. Mmm. Whoo! Got a little kick to it. Yes, I like it. Does. it. Yes, I it like does. It. All right, now that we're liquored up, what do okay. we do next? You, how are you with zesting? Well, I mean, I think, I don't know. You <laughs> tell me. Okay, just be careful. You don't want to like zest your fingers. This is an ongoing thing. I don't know if I'm right or left. Can I, can I, can I show you, can please, I show you something? Would you please? Okay, yes, okay. So you can do this one of two ways. You can actually do it like this. Oh, I've never seen that. And what happens is the zester then captures the zest there, and you can go just go oh, like that. Oh, I like that. that. You like that? Yeah. Try that. try that. Well, just be careful with it. They are sharp. <laughs> this is painful for you, isn't it? No, it's not at all. How much? Can I be done That's zesting? Enough. That's okay. enough. Well, well, we, we need lemon, lemon too. Okay. Yeah. Can I be done zesting? <laughs> oh I've God. had enough of zesting. Zesting. <laughs> Death by zesting. Has the zester ever killed anyone? Okay. I don't know. All right, that's enough lemon. Okay, good. <laughs> I can't watch it anymore. <laughs> you know what I'm going to do? Avoid all recipes with zesting. There will be no zesting. Who okay. needs zest? No. Okay. Now, um, we're gonna take all this mayonnaise. Okay. And the mayonnaise obviously is gonna give it some richness. Mm -hmm. Every, like mayonnaise always tastes good and yeah. also it's gonna help uh, bind the, uh, the crab cake itself. Okay. We're gonna take one tablespoon, which is that measure yes. of, of horseradish. Okay. Horseradish has a good zesty flavor to it. It does. Make sure sinus is open up. Exactly, it does. I love horseradish. Me too. Uh, How much of that? The one tablespoon of uh, whole grain mustard. Okay. And the thing I like about whole grain mustard is obviously it's going to have that little mustard bite. Yes. And um, <laughs> I just, I, you know what I love it. about you? This is like the measuring is a guide, which honestly, I, I actually like that because we're not baking, so it doesn't have to be well, exact. That's funny because that's one of the hardest things for me to get used to is that it doesn't have to be all perfect. Especially when you're not baking. Yeah. Okay. okay and half then, tablespoon of whatever this is. Uh, what is it's this? actually ha half tablespoon of Calabrian chilies. They're hot. Mm. Yes. Toss all this crab in here. Oh, okay. Exciting. Okay. Now, where did you get this at the store? This is uh, Maryland Jumbo Lump Crab Meat. Mm -hmm. It's already cooked and it's already clean. Okay. It's, it's not cheap, but it's it's a great product. Yeah. We don't want to mix it yet okay. because we want the crab to stay, you know, in, in pretty big pieces. Okay. You know, you paid money for that texture. Yeah. We don't want to destroy it. Okay. All right. How are you with seasoning? I think one of the things that separates a home cook from a professional cook is how aggressive they season. Oh. And, I, and I'm talking about just salt and pepper. Okay. Okay. So this is kosher salt, which is what I always use. Mm -hmm. And when you pick up kosher salt in your fingers, you mm -hmm. can feel it. Yeah. And when I season with kosher salt, I crush it in my fingers and then I just go like this. Okay. Should and I add more? Add some more. Exactly. Ooh, and more then, or no? And then pepper. Okay. And like. How's that? More. Oh. Now we're going to take two tablespoons of Wonder Flour. Now what is Wonder Flour? What one, is so it's one draw. 
Oh, it's wonder, not wonder, wonder, wonder flower. I wonder what wonder yeah. is. There you go, wonder flower. Jump it in. Yes, so wonder flower is kind of sprinkle it around. Wonder flower is, um, it's already steamed and cooked, so it's oh. gonna dissolve a lot easier than, say, all purpose flour, which is still raw. Oh, okay. okay. And this is what's gonna help bind our crab cakes. Now, we're gonna, we're gonna you, can, you can start to fold it in, mm -hmm. and I want you to fold as opposed to stirring. All right, I remember folding from baking. Exactly. See, this is starting to look really good. Mm -hmm. Now, one of the things about these crab cakes, Savannah, is that we walk a tightrope in terms of whether or not they're gonna hold together. And what we're doing is, we're giving up the idea of adding lots of breadcrumbs and lots of filler mm -hmm. and keeping it about the crab, but at the same time, we want it to stay together. So we're not using those crutches. We're not using the crutches. So we want flavor. So this is where um, we're gonna get we're gonna have to get our hands dirty. How do you feel about that? I, I feel good if I'm wearing these gloves. Oh my goodness! Spikes it's not me, very so. glamorous, but I'm gonna go with okay, it. Okay, no, I see, I know. Okay, so I'm just making a little ball. So yeah, so you, so you make a ball like, like this. A round ball, okay. To I start, be flat. almost like a meatball. But then what I do is I I make it into almost like a burger. Oh. Okay. How's that look? Should I make it a little flatter? Like yeah, yours? like that. See if you can make it like that. Yeah. Well, it's kind of like that. Okay, let's see if we can tell who is this who's. Okay, that's definitely the professional. Yes, we can. Yes, <laughs> yes, we most certainly can. When did you start cooking? How did you learn? I started cooking when I was 17 years old. Huh? I dropped out of high school. Wow. And I went to work in a restaurant because I needed a job. And I've been doing the same thing every day. Oh my gosh. <clears throat> it's 10 years later. <laughs> wow. It's been a decade. You look so young. <laughs> Thanks. Do okay. these cook or chill or what? They're gonna, ch <laughs> they're gonna chill. Okay. So they, and, and chilling them is actually one of the things that's gonna help hold them together. Okay. Okay. So you want to put them in the refrigerator? I will. They look so good. Oh, beautiful. Okay. All right, tartar sauce time. Let's All right, do so, it. so chives are in the onion family. Mm -hmm. um, I love chives, and I like to I like to cut them, like I like to cut the edge off. What edge? Like I just I like to cut the edge off like yeah, this. Yeah, I don't like those friends. And then okay. and then start here. Okay. So then you have a nice 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 even edge. Yeah. Oh yeah. And then again, just kind of that rocking method. Mm -hmm. That's what I like to work. I'm trying just to hide my fingers like you. Talk. Very very as fine as you can get them. Okay. Ooh. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're doing a great job. Okay. Don't daydream. I know. That's really good. Thank you. And also incredibly consistent. Oh, good. I'm so delighted. I mean, look at that. Okay. That's really, really good. I love it. And do we have enough? Um, yeah. Okay. Between the two of us, I think okay. we have plenty. All right. Just throw it all in? Yeah, toss okay. it in there. So now we're going to stir everything okay. together. So we're going to start with some orange zest, okay. now that you're a professional yeah, zester. Exactly. Uh, we have some capers that are chopped mm, up. Okay. Okay, good, nice, salty flavor. It seems chunky and, for a sauce. But it's a, it's a, it's a tartar sauce, okay. and, and, and it's, it, it has texture, which is great. So these are the um, cornichon, or oh. gherkins, as you like to call gherkins. them. Gherkins. They're, they're pickles. They're oh. baby, baby pickles. I love a baby yeah. pickle. Chef's, chef tax. Orange oh, juice. Orange, orange juice, really? Orange yeah. juice, yeah. Okay. And then salt and pepper, always. Oh, okay. Sprinkle, sprinkle technique. Crush. Crush and sprinkle. Two tablespoons of that vinegar. Mm. Just do it by eye. Okay. I do, can't it by do, eye. It. do it by eye. Do it by. You can promise? do it. I promise. I, I'm right. I'm standing right here. Okay. 
Perfect. That's one. A little more. That's two. Good. Really? God, I feel like a pro. Killing the game. So you're just gonna mix this all together mm -hmm. um, until it's well incorporated, mm -hmm. and then. You know, we'll, we'll let this sit for like a half an hour. We have a lot of flavors in there. They, we just want all the flavors to kind of melt together. Looks Here, good. You, you have to taste this. Okay. Oh, yeah. Make, make sure you're happy with all this the seasoning, et cetera. Oh, that's good. Ooh, that little, that thing. Yes, exactly. That, that's, the, that's the pickling. Uh, that, that's the, um, as you like to call them, the gherkins or the <laughs> cornichon. We can leave it at room temperature. Okay. Um, you just put a little in the, ser in the serving bowl mm -hmm. so it looks nice and pretty. Yeah. And we can save the rest for later. Okay. If there's any left over. Oh, great. All right, perfect. Let's make some crab cakes. Okay, should I go get them? Please do. This is so fun. You're doing so much of the work. <laughs> we're gonna take some Wondra flour. Wondra, okay? how much Wondra? Make sure we have I enough. wonder how much Wondra. <laughs> okay. Salt and pepper. Okay. And, and this, this is something that you should know in general. When you're doing a dredging station, like yeah. if you're making cutlets of chicken where it's like yeah. flour, egg, Breadcrumbs, mm -hmm. you season every layer. Okay. Otherwise, it's going to be bland. Okay. Exactly. Interesting. Yeah, stir it around mm -hmm. so it's just seasoned. Mm -hmm. And then, so basically, what we're going to do is now, this is, you have to be very gentle here, Savannah. We have the crab cakes, they're nice and chill. Mm -hmm. So we're just going to kind of go like this. Very, just top and bottom, or should I get the sides? You can get the sides too. Okay. Okay. You're going to drop it right in there? We're going to drop it right in. Let okay. me show you. So basically, a good, a good way to do that is like this. Okay, and they're gonna fry. The so you wanna do the same thing. Out. So okay, like, gentle, yeah, very gentle. Treat them with kid gloves, so to speak. Mm -hmm. Okay, you does know? that seem good? Yep, put okay. it on there and just very carefully, don't drop it. Don't be mad. Beautiful. What we're trying to accomplish is creating a nice crust on the outside on all parts of the crab cake. Okay. And it's gonna take about three minutes on each side. Okay, I was gonna say, I'm gonna have to flip these over. because. Yeah, at some yes. point. Okay. We're gonna flip this in a few seconds. Okay. Now, again, you want to be careful here. And what I what I like to do is kind of like turn it away from me. Oh. So if it splatters, it goes that way as opposed to this okay. way. Okay. See, look, nice and crusty. Looks nice, and we didn't. It didn't fall apart. No. Or yeah. If this falls apart, I'm gonna die. In no, shape. it's not gonna fall apart. Could you just be a good crab cake. Right. Hey. I know, but you right? did it right at you. Oh. Just be careful. Go, okay. go, you know. Oh, okay, okay. All right, so move, move this one over here. Okay. Okay. Okay, now this guy. So this guy, here's what you can do. You can just use this guy mm -hmm. as the, as the, uh, as, as the background. Okay. Right, exactly. But, use him to flip it over. Okay, and then, I'm gonna, oh, come on now. Now they're friends, they right. don't want to get apart. Okay, now right. flip it this way. Flip it. This way. Yeah. But I find that to be harder. Okay. Oh no, it's falling apart. I knew it was too good to be true. Oh, Bobby, we got a loose crab piece. No, it's okay. What do we do? There's one little crab piece. All Don't right. worry about it. You know what? Whew. Here's the thing. They'll know they're homemade. Yes. That, and that's really good. That's a really good thing. That's true. All right, so basically now, we're gonna start to take these out, and we're gonna put them on a paper towel yeah. so that they just drain a little bit. Draining, okay. Should I go for it? Yeah, go for it. Can't lose another one. Gorgeous. This is Bobby's. A good one. A good one. Put this on your plate. Can I use my finger? Yeah. Spinach? And then this is the number two. Yep. That? Yeah, hold on. Okay. Nice job. Mm -hmm. This is the problem child. Okay, this guy wants to fall apart. Don't do it. Don't fall It looks apart. great. It does. It looks it's great. It's gonna taste good. All right. A little salt and pepper on top mm -hmm. while it's still while it's still warm. I'm doing your is that too much? I'm no, doing your that's fine. We have crab cakes. Um, and then we're gonna put them on here. Okay. Come on, bring them on over. Oh, don't break, don't break, don't break. Nice. Gosh, these look really good. Don't they? Yeah. Nice and crusty. Oh, and hot. Look at that. Okay. I'm gonna put Gorgeous. this on the table. Gorgeous. Yes, put it on the table. Are you so proud of us? I am very proud of you.
we're gonna fry some fish. But before we get into that, let's make our black bean mango salsa. Prioritizing what you do first, second, third, etc. in any meal is really important. But we, we know that we can make the black bean salsa, the black bean and mango salsa ahead of time, let it sit, have it done, because the fish, when we cook it, then we wanna eat. We're gonna start by uh, dicing an, uh, an onion. We need half of a red onion. Okay. That's gonna be good enough for government work. Here we go. Exactly. I'm not gonna beat Bobby Flay today. No, you're not, but these look really good. Well, let's do the mango next. Okay. Mango yeah. is a very tricky fruit. It's a very tricky fruit. Um, first of all, when you pick a mango, you want it to be ripe. You want it to have some give as you kind of okay. push your thumb into yeah. it. Making these stand up is really important. And then you're gonna go up down both sides of the mango so that you get these two lobes. One like oh. this, and then one like this. No pit, no pit, no pit. Yeah, the okay. pit is in there. Okay, and then you're trying and, to avoid and, the pit. And then of course you can, you can go around the sides to get these little pieces as well. Yeah. You don't want to lose. I can't see where that pit is. And then basically, this is like the pits in here, but I just eat this. Oh, mm. I like that. So good, so ripe. Mm -hmm. We're going to make like a, almost like diamond in the, in, the, in the mango. You don't want to mm -hmm. cut all the way through, just to the skin. Mm -hmm. Then you're going to turn it, and you're going to go this way. Oh, I'm making like a little... I actually cut an avocado sometimes like this. Yes, exactly right. You can scoop the, you can scoop the mango. Mm -hmm. Right with a spoon. Oh, look okay. at that! Okay. There's a handful of different ways to cut a mango. I think this is like, I think this is the prettiest way and, and the easiest way. That's now, cool. some of my pieces are kind of big. And Don't funky. worry about it. Okay. We're making tacos. Everything's gonna be fine. Exactly. I use canned black beans all the time. They're always cooked perfectly. Good. Strain them out. Throw them in there. Good. Because I didn't want to make beans. Okay. okay. I didn't want to make beans, so you're not gonna make beans. <laughs> okay. Okay. So we pour have... the margarita. No, I'm no, no. Okay. <laughs> well, That'd close. Good. Yeah. Close. The lime juice. Lime juice. Yes. Okay. Okay, now now a couple more things we're gonna mm -hmm. put in here. Some honey. Okay, how much? Um, I don't know, open it up. Let's do this. Oh boy. Let's do this. Uh, pour some in. Gonna... Pour some in, yeah. what does that even mean? That's good, right? A little more. Really? Yeah. Okay. That's good. Whatever oh, you say, honey. I've actually, I forgot one more thing. Oh. We, have, we, have, we have to put the, the jalapeno in oh, there. Oh, okay. We have, to, we have to dice that. Okay. Okay, let's cut the stem off. Cut it in half lengthwise. Okay. okay. You're gonna take the inside pith mm -hmm. and the uh, and the seeds out. So now we just have the, the flesh of the pepper. Mm -hmm. And then you're gonna turn it upside down. Yeah, flatten it. Mm -hmm. Push it down and then yeah. you're gonna dice it. Put some olive oil in there. How much? It says one quarter cup. Fire away. Can I measure Go. it? No. I want okay. you in the bowl. Okay, okay, I'm in I the bowl. I want you in the bowl. I'm present. Exactly. Because that seems this, like, okay, that seems like a, is that enough? A little more, because you feel like you're doing it, okay? Yeah, That's good. good? Okay. And then and then you're gonna season this with salt and pepper, because we season everything with salt and pepper. Yes. Look at okay. you. Look at, I'm doing your technique. A little more? A little, little something salty, and then, and then that's okay. good. And then some black pepper. Okay. And stir. Stir this up. Okay. This is looking good. All right. Some of my big mango chunks are a little aggressive, but it's good. It actually looks very good. I'm gonna add some cilantro. How do okay. you feel about cilantro? Um, I like the flavor. I've never chopped it or anything. Okay, so let's do this. Okay. Make a little room on your board. Mm -hmm. You're going to take the flowers off the stems. Okay, like all these leaves, you mean? The leaves, yeah. That's the part of cilantro that you wanna eat. Okay, that's good. Okay. So then just kind of make it into a pile like this, and you're going to coarsely chop it. So you put your hand on top of the knife and you just kind of rock back and forth, right? And, you, and then you kind of go this back and forth That's this fine. way. This makes me feel like I'm on a cooking and just, show. And, and, and put it back into a pile. Mm -hmm. Okay, oh, it sounds good. That's coarsely chopped herbs. Okay. As opposed to finely chopped, okay. nice and coarse. Throw them in there. Okay, mm -hmm. so we're gonna, we're gonna stir this up. Stir it. You okay. taste it and tell me what you think. Okay. Mmm, I like it. Do you think it needs anything? A little underneath. Okay. I think it needs a little more salt. Okay. And this is the way you cook. If you're not chewing, mm -hmm. you're not cooking. Mm -hmm. It's also beautiful. It is, it's gorgeous. Gorgeous. Okay. Next step? Next step, let's, let's fry some fish. Let's do it. And, what I like to do before I deep fry, what? take a big deep swig. Okay, let's do Should it. Should we do it? Yes, absolutely. It's the deep cheers. fry swig. Okay, so instead of the deep <coughs> beer batter. I love that you drink first and then cheers. Well, <laughs> I didn't know we were choosing. You, you were prepping. Okay. Like a okay. Form. So let's let's get let's start okay. with rice flour. Okay. okay. How much? So we're gonna do equal parts. We'll do one cup, two equal parts of water, and you're going to whisk. Okay. What we're trying to achieve here mm -hmm. is a very light batter, mm -hmm. so that it has some crispiness, but you can 
definitely see and taste the fish. Okay. Okay, that's the key. Now you told me that fish, that fried doesn't have to be bad for you. But I isn't mean, isn't frying like just terrible? Well, well, frying can be bad for you if, if like for instance, the the oil is is not is not hot enough, mm -hmm. and it and it seeps in throughout all the protein. Oh. But if it's just crisping the outside of it and repelling it, then mm -hmm. it's totally fine. Okay. Now how's that? Okay, so that's fine. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a little bit of of this of this rice flour, mm -hmm. and we're gonna use this as a dredge, kind oh. of like. You know, like, we, yeah. we don't even have to measure it. All right, we, do, we can just, and then we're gonna season every, every layer, as mm -hmm. we said, remember? Look at my heavy hands. I know, are you seasoning more now than ever before? Yeah, especially with your eyes on me. I, yeah. I don't wanna get in trouble. <laughs> How's that? It's good. Uh, season now, the fish I, too. Do I need to whisk? Oh my season gosh, the fish. Really? Yes. We don't, want, we don't want bland foods, man. No, I do not, but geez, that's a lot. I would, be, I would just be afraid it'd that's be good. like over salted. That's good. Nope, pepper too? Yep. Okay. That's a, that's a thick, dense piece of fish. We okay. want it, we want to taste it. But I didn't have to do both sides. That's fine. Side. That's okay. totally fine. So, okay. So we're going to dredge this, mm -hmm. meaning we're going to take the fish, make sure, and, and hit it on all sides mm -hmm. on the flour, on, in the flour first. Flour first and then? Or yes, I would have done because, this, then this. No, because this is actually going to hold on to this. Okay. All right. So should I use tongs or just do something? Use your hand. Okay. All right. So roll dredging. It around. Yeah. Roll it around. All sides kind of yep. deal? Okay. Kinda. And then, and then pat it so that you get the excess off. Mm -hmm. That's enough. Like that? Yep. And in here? Yep. I want to be careful. Okay. Let's just do this. Yeah, with me. Okay. Oh, okay. 365 degrees. Okay, there's Let's, that thermometer. Now you can, okay. do, the, you can do the rest okay, of them. Okay, let me do And this is going to be a very, very light batter. Nice and crispy. I hope you don't like that shirt because I'm okay. getting flour all over it. No problem. Okay. Well, send me your bill. I'm just going to keep drinking. <laughs> That's what I recommend. I love coming to your kitchen. There's always alcohol in it. I know. Savannah's Syrupy Kitchen. You're doing great. I love the technique. Okay. And also, like, you're, 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 you're moving really well in the kitchen. All right, so we're going to let this cook for about five minutes. Okay. Total. And then we have a wire rack there so that the oil drips through to the bottom. Okay. Just be very gentle and also be very careful. It's very hot oil. You can't even see anything. I don't even know if I'm getting one. Okay, wait. wait. Yeah, see? Okay. See, it's like a stealth-like batter. Just yes. touch that. Okay. Nice and crispy. Right. Let's did I get enough on there? You did great. Let's get the fish out of the pot. Okay. <laughs> it's been five minutes. Is this look right to you? Yep, put it on the uh, tray. Looks great. Look okay. at that. That's gorgeous. It does. Ooh, I didn't stick the landing. So great. Okay. It so looks light nice. and crispy. It really does. Here are your two favorite friends. Oh, jeez. Here we go. A okay. little salt and pepper. Okay. Just on top while it's still hot and the oil's still warm. Oh my gosh, I really overdid that one. Well, that's a salt. It's okay. And also, when you season, you want to season from up here. Why? Because otherwise, you're going to have clumps of salt. Well, that's what I did. Too get. close. You're right. Exactly. Well, that's what happened. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. Ooh. Nice. Can we Done. eat? Yes, let's eat. You get okay. the fish, I'll get the salsa. All right. Let's do it. But it's not, it's not just your TV. I actually learned something today. I know, today. I know. How are you gonna do 
create your fish taco. Okay, so we have some tortillas here. Yeah. Nice and warm. Mm -hmm. Oh, that looks like a nice tortilla. Um, I'm gonna teach you a secret. Don't okay. take the one on the top. Take the one in the middle because oh. it's more pliable. Oh, how interesting. You see it? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I take a little avocado relish. Mm -hmm. And then you can take a piece of fish. Mm -hmm. Fish on top. Mm -hmm. mm. Oh my gosh. A little mango salsa. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Oh my gosh, this looks so good. All right? Yeah. And then what I like to do is just kind of squeeze a lime on top. Oh, yeah. That's good. And then you can take a little cilantro, mm -hmm. maybe just a spray and put it on top. You can just pick up your tortilla. Mm -hmm. And you have a fish taco. Oh my gosh, this is a big bite. Turn the camera away. It's not well, you, pretty pretty. You taste taste the fish. You know, it's okay. like. Okay. Mm. Oh my god. <laughs> it's so good. Don't look at me. It's but it, so good. It's light and crispy. Mm. You did a great job cooking the fish. And this is obviously great for, you know, to make a taco. But also, like, you can also do like serve it as, you know, fish and chips. Oh my kids would love that with this ketchup. Yeah. Just remember this. Flavor is very important, but contrast of texture is, is just as important okay. in, in eating and cooking. All right, I gotta try this uh, crab cake mm. now. Mm. That is so good. It tastes like crab. It tastes like crab. And that's the cake. I would say that's the best crab cake I ever had. Best crab cake you ever made. Yeah, that's true. Only <laughs> crab cake I ever made, but yum, that is delish. Mm. And I love this chunky tartar sauce. This is delicious. I am so proud of myself. I'm proud of you. I'm proud of you. Thank Cheers. Thank you. You've been on a long journey with me, Bobby. Savannah, invite me back anytime. I'm here to teach. I <laughs>